strap in and turn up the radio for hard-hitting, high-scoring USF Cougar football. Coach Kevin Donnelly joins Joe Parson and the Redeemer Radio sports team for one of the great traditions at Fort Wayne sports as we count down to the kickoff on Redeemer Radio. Welcome back, everybody. Deerfield, Illinois, the site, the venue for the opener of Cougar Football 2016. Akeem Kelsaw is back. He's healthy. The Snyder grad uh, has been battling injuries all of his uh, collegiate career, but he's back ready to receive the kickoff, so St. Francis will get the ball first. Moving from right to left, they're uh, returning the ball out of the north end zone, and Trinity International kick away from left to right. As we mentioned, nat- natural grass field here. And the field looks very good to shake here, Bill. Uh, I, really, the grass is not uh, not. You had a chance to walk down there, but uh, it's not tall at all. And, Joe, it's great to have uh, Team Kelsaw back on the field. Back for a rare sixth year after hearing the Achilles. And here's the kickoff. Kelsaw from inside the five, straight up across the 15, 20, 25, brought down with a shoot swing tackle right there. So it'll be St. Francis to go to work offensively first in 10, 11 and 1 a year ago. They'll move from length to left as we look at it here atop the press box at Leslie Frazier Field. Cougar offense, tackle to tackle, averages 279 a man, led by Brian Gegner. A lot of veterans back, Zach Minardo at Wingard. Uh, Jalen Gamble is a newcomer. Keegan Bruner at one tackle along with Alex Woods. They average 279. Ferreira, the quarterback, trots onto the field. He'll be joined by Kelsall, stays out there. And Seth Cote, what a year he had a year ago, led the Cougars with 58 catches, over 1,200 receiving yards, 18 touchdowns, and 40 in all touchdown passes from this guy ready to take the snap. That is Nick Ferreira. Short drop, looks for Cote and throws the fade. There's a foot race, and that ball sails incomplete. So right away, Kevin Donnelly chooses to go vertical, and uh, it's going to be a cat and mouse game for a while, Joe, because St. Francis just doesn't know what sort of defense to expect. Right away, you saw Trinity get into two down linemen with uh, two ends standing up on the line of scrimmage, so they still disguise whether it's actually a, a classic 4-3 or a 3-4 defense on the first play. Seth, Seth Coates didn't get downfield quite fast enough to run underneath uh, Nick Ferrer's pass. Jason Nicodemus into the game. He's part of the three wide pack to the left side. They'll run the ball and hand off to the right side. Looking for some running room and rambling out across the 30 to the 33 yard line. And uh, let's see if that was Dean. Dean, who carried for 452 yards, rushed for six touchdowns a year ago. It'll bring up third down and two. So the Cougars moving from length to left. Over the the ball game as yeah, they break out of the huddle. Monte McDowell into the game as well. He's lined up uh, to the short side to the right. Two wing backs in the ball game. Running back Dean flanked to the left of Nick Ferrer. Third down and short, less than three. Here's a little counter run and uh, didn't get there. Dean on the counter run. Dean gets back only to the 34-yard line, and that looks to be about a yard short of the first down stick. So that play looked like it was going to open up, and Dean uh, trying to pick his spot to slide in the lane on that counter play. Jeff got tripped up before he could get to the stick. So on their first drive of the 2016 season, the Cougars are going to come up with a three and out, and we'll see our first punt of the season. Josh Pitt. Spitnail will kick the ball away, waits for the snap at his own 21-yard line. He averaged 37.1 yards a punt into the wind. Wobbly ball off the side of his foot, hits at the 40, and kicks out of bounds. It'll be a Trinity International football at their own 38, as we will see the Trojans for the first time offensively here today. We have no score, 13-30 remaining in this opening quarter. Cougars starting the year two games in a row on the road. Here today in the uh, of the suburbs, northwest suburbs of uh, Illinois, and then uh, they travel down next week to Urban A, which is south of Chicago, the uh, spring training site of the Chicago Bears against Olivet Mass Spring. That's next Saturday night at 7, Fort Wayne time. Quarterback, we're expecting to see J.J. Burmeister at quarterback. Let's see, they will run the ball up the middle, and that's struggling for yardage across the 40. That'll be a gain of about two yards, maybe close to three. Looking at the offensive line, 
for the Trojans. They averaged 293 a man tackle to tackle Christian Shears at center. Ian uh, runs the prison along with uh, Darrell Thomas, Kyle Groom, and Joshua Cook are the tackles. Eight of uh, two, let's call it second down and eight. One wide to the left side, that's Corey Wendell. It caught, caught 36 balls last year. This alignment, and here's a misdirection handoff, and a quick pitch comes to the right side, and well defended by USF as Lee Stewart came up and uh, helped out on the tackle. So a good stop, and it'll bring a third down and six now coming up for the Trudgens. Eric Dunton defending on that play. A little zone read call by Trinity on second down there, Joe. That's exactly what USF has been working very hard against the last couple of weeks as they prepare for Trinity International. It's a spread-style offense. You're going to see a lot of that zone read option-type football out of the Trojans today. TIU trying to get their own 49-yard line to convert third down and six now. A little motion back from right to left behind the line of scrimmage. J.J. Burmeister flushed. He handles the ball, dumps it off, and they will lose yardage. Well defended, well bracketed defensively. Pearson Harnish was there, and he was joined. thought that was Matt Munstey that maybe came in there. We'll check it for St. Francis, but well defended, and he'll bring up fourth down. And Both teams, uh, Phil, going out three and out in their first series. Well, really a, a thing of beauty, Joe, I thought by the Cougar defense on their first three plays. Actually, Trinity executed their plays well, but St. Francis uh, had them defend it perfectly each time. So we're going to see our first uh, exchange of punts. What a punt. That one driving Tulsa back. Zachary will drop the ball in the end zone, picks it up, and uh, he will get up to the one-yard line only. Probably would have been well to just let that ball sail over his head and it would have been a touchback, but he tried to make a play, fumbled away, got it back, but it'll be Cougars with the ball. That's the good news, but that bottled up deep in their own end of things. Kelso, I think you're right, Joe. Probably made the mistake, but he wanted he didn't want the ball to get downed inside the five yard line and he made the tactical error of trying to catch the ball at about the one or two yard line and the ball slithered through his hands back into the end zone. And then he picked it up, and then he was in a world of hurt because if he gets tackled there, it's going to be a safety, which would have been a, a horrible way to get this ball game started. But Kelso got out of the end zone. The Cougars starting in a big hole. And I tell you what, a punt that was wind-assisted, but that went about 65 yards in the air. So here come the Cougars now, second possession, straight ahead. Perry uh, trying to get a little more breathing room out to about the five-yard line is all. So St. Francis uh, on the first snap in this second series, keeping it straight up the middle with a run call. And, yeah, again, that's P.J. Dean. P.J. Dean. Aaron Harris also available. And in case you missed the word, Justin Green was at, he was declared academically eligible on Thursday. Uh, Coach Daly told me during the week, he said he might play him in the second half here. We'll see. But he really needs to get back into playing a game sheet. That was a gain of three, second down and seven. Dean lined up behind Ferrer in the pistol. Here's Ferrer, and they've got him wet. And he got rid of the ball late. Let's see how they rule it. They're going to call it rounding, I believe. And uh, that may be a safety. Yeah, and if it's if it's grounding from the end zone, that's exactly what the call be. It will be a safety. And somebody blitzed on the right side of that Trinity defense, Joe, and came through untouched. And Ferrer never had a chance. He took his two three-step drop, and he was and talking about being dropped. Popped the ball out, trying to, to get rid of it, and uh, we're waiting now for a decision uh, from the officials who are conferring down there at about the two-yard line. But uh, I don't think this is going to be good news for the Cougars. Probably going to be a two-to-zero lead for Trinity when all is said and done. Actually, we're getting the flag is being waved off. No flag on the play. And it's being called an incomplete pass. Apparently, I've got to believe they said that there was a Cougar in the area who had a chance to catch that football. So, a little bit of the luck for the uh, Cougars to start this series. As it is, it's third down and long. St. Francis with the ball. And they will have to get out to about their own, just short of the 14-yard line. Barrera again with Dean lined up behind him in the end zone. Here comes the snap, short drop, and loading up. Here's a quick throw. That's a catch made, and uh, it's Dean 
who stinks. He does not have the first down yard. He's got a number 28. Number 11. And the Kickers, again, will go three and out. He'll just stick the ball away into the wind. And that's a big play. It's the open by Riley Priestler, who led everybody in the MSFA in tackles a year ago. Number one with 152 tackles. He also had 11 and a half tackles for loss and two interceptions. He is very, very quick with fourth down and three. Spitnail now two yards deep in the end zone to kick it away. No score in our ball game. Exactly 10 minutes remaining here in this first quarter. Good snap. Kick us away. Wing catches it. It's still a hide. And there's a Williams. Williams from his own 46 and turns the corner. There's a block in the back. And finally, we got the call as Williams. I heard the whistles all over the place. And it was the side judge is the one who made the call. Another official right in the vicinity of where that block in the back occurred. Never made the call. You see that so often, Phil. Well, the flag did come out a little bit late, and the side judge would have had a good look at that. It looked like the Cougars were going to pin uh, Trinity uh, right where the punt landed, and that was at about Trinity 45, a pretty good uh, punt by Spitnail. And if you think about it, it, against that wind, Joe, and that's exactly what the call is going to be. you got a block in the back, so from the 50-yard line, a markup of 10 yards, Trinity will start first and 10 at the 40. So here comes the Trojan offense back onto the field. KG Burmeister threw for 642 yards a season ago. Four touchdown passes, three interceptions. He averaged 116 and a half yards a ball game. But now it'll be TIU starting from their own 40-yard line instead of into Cougar territory. Burmeister is a junior, 6'1", 194. And they'll uh, have Raphael Williams as the running back there right now. I think that's Williams. We'll check that for you. Pearson Harney shows the blitz as they run the ball. And what's been feeling this way, that's a run right side. And there's some big yardage. That's a good run that time by the Trojans as they got the ball in the hand of Quentin Reeder. Quentin Reeder in the backfield getting the call. And he runs for a first down up to midfield. Now Isaac Branch will check out into the ball game. He's a sophomore, 5'8", 170. He ran for 182 yards and three touchdowns a season ago. Two wide to the left side of the field, one flanker near side. That's in motion now. Burmeister looks and springs the ball and good play defensively. That was Spencer Coward came up, walked through a block, and made the tackle for no gain. Absolutely. Yeah, that's really a great play by Coward. Uh, he was being blocked out on that edge on the on the what we'll call a bubble screen, and Coward just shed that block and got to the ball carrier before. Uh, any yards to be gained. It looks like actually a small loss on the play. So a good play by Coward, and that brings up second down. Second and 10. uh, Now they move the ball back on the TIU side of midfield. Motion by Godfrey. Here's the counter. No, it's a keeper play this time by Burmeister. Burmeister, who ran the 25 times for just 18 yards. And he'll get the positive yardage about three, maybe four yards, let's call it. So that will be a gain and brings up a third down and six with TIU trying to reach the Cougar 40-yard line. Clock approaching eight minutes. We have no score in the first quarter of this ball game here. Season opener, St. Francis on the road to start the 2016 season. And TIU into Cougar territory now, two wide to the left including Godfrey. Corey Wendell is out there as well. Burmeister has motion right to left behind the line of scrimmage now. And looks, throws over the middle. And he's got the catch for a first down. That's hard. It's all the way down the left sideline. Vince Rapid Cougar. Yes, right he needs to let the field. Right around 15. Brad Hargis. First down. Two yard junior. He had Trojans a year ago with six touchdowns, and he showed some very good speed. Crossing route to the wing back. That's what we would call it in the St. Francis offense. Coming out about 10 yards down the field. Covered there by Harnish. So you get uh, you try and create a little bit of a mismatch. And a little more speed out of uh, their wing back. And he's able to accelerate after the catch. Get to the sideline and turn it upfield. So Trinity is on the move. They'll move that ball to the 19. First and 10. And here is, again, quarterback keeper play on the read option. 
And uh, that ball was stripped away but late, and uh, it'll be Burmeister knocked out of bounds. JJ, across JJ, the JJ, 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 JJ. Uh, about two or three yards. So that'll bring up second, down. second, second down, down now. Second down, and let's call it eight. And they spot that ball at the USF 17-yard line. If you're looking ahead, Jeremiah Carter, uh, just a prolific field goal kicker, 11 of 15 a year ago, had a long of 48. And inside of 40 yards, he was a perfect eight for eight. But right now, TIU's thinking of more. No score early on in our ball game as we're inside of seven minutes, time remaining first quarter. Dropping the throw, Burmeister springs the ball into the flat. There's a run after a missed tackle inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. Isaac pass, Branch pass is coming out of the back. Number 23, to Isaac the right Branch. Side. And that will be, let's see where they can spot that ball, just short of the first down step at the 13. So to bring up Phil, it'll be first down, and they've got to reach the 10. Cougar defense, really, I think, you know, they're, they need to set back a little bit and probably – uh, instead of looking for big plays and trying to force turnovers, they've got to get back to the basics here. They've missed a couple of tackles on this drive already, um, although they've been looking to try and punch the ball out and do things like that. So they're going to need a big play at this position. Burmeister again with motion right to left, option run to the left side, pitches the ball, and they will have the first down as that's Branch getting some blockers out in front. Yes, will that number 23, Isaac Branch. First down, T.I. So the Trojans try to draw first blood in this ball game as we have 5.54 remaining in this fast-moving opening first quarter. Burmeister. And they will bring more help into the ball game. We saw earlier Clinton Reader who checks in. And Wimble stays in wide to the left side. Hargis, who talked caught a big pass earlier in the series, wide to the right. Cougars come up uh, on the corners. And meanwhile, option run once again. Here comes the pitch. And uh, that time they've got him wrapped up. Good play defensively as uh, USF got help from one of the linebackers coming up there. That was Blake Blaker. So Blaker, who uh, gets a starting a nod here today, making a good uh, Good play defensively, and that's a loss that'll move the ball back about a yard. It'll be second and goal from the nine-yard line. TIU shuttling troops in. Wendell stays in. Wide part of the trips package now. Wide to the left side for Trinity International. Second and goal from the eight-yard line. Actually, it's closer to the nine. Running back is Branch. Short drop. Looking, being pursued. Running to the left side. Throws it away. Nothing there that time for J.J. Burmeister. And, uh, third down. Third down. That's down, so it'll be third down and goal from the eight. The Cougar defense last yeah, year, Joe, we talked about turnovers. Yes, seven uh, big sixes. Let's go. time USF record last year. And so they are, they are a big play defense looking for plays like that. That's what they're looking for in right now. Uh, on third Let's down, they're hoping to at least force the field goal attempt. Let's go! PIU still huddled up uh, 14 on the play clock. Let's see if they're going to have to burn a timeout. We're down now to eight, and they're still in the huddle. Just coming up the line of scrimmage now with four, with three, with two, and uh, I believe the coaches saw that, and they will take a timeout right here. So will we, 438 remaining in the opening quarter. No score. Ten but guys is driving. And we'll be back. This is Cougar Football and Redeemer Radio, 106.3 FM, Northeast Indiana. You can help support your Catholic parish or school with Notre Dame Federal Credit Union's Elevate program. You'll not only enjoy excellent personal service and save money with your new loan or credit card, you'll also be giving money back to the participating parish or school you care about. Let Notre Dame Federal Credit Union elevate all participating parishes or schools. Elevate can be reached at 844-230-6611 or visit us online at ndelevate.com. Independent from the university. Well, the Trojans uh, on the move right now. They'll have that third down and goal from the eight yard line of St. Francis. The Cougars uh, have not really had much opportunity to fill offensively. They've struggled a little bit, and CIU starting to put some things together. Let's go on two drives for the Cougars so far. 
uh, exactly no first downs, two, three and outs. The offense not with an opportunity to get on track, and they were actually pinned back in their own territory, and that's what caused good field position at the start of this drive for TIU. And now, and now brings up the first down. Isaac Grant is the running back of the one-back set. Three wide again to the left. Here is the time. And Burmeister hit as he released that ball and uh, sails to the left corner of the end zone. Overthrows everybody. Yeah, and everybody got a throw away. And he'll set up the field goal attempt coming up now. So, as we will see Jeremiah Carter come onto the field. Prolific success last year. Had 51 points. Tied for number seven among all kickers in the MSFA. This will be from the 15-yard line. Little angle off to the right. It'll be a 25-yard attempt. Holder on the play is Mike Mendoza. 25-yard attempt by TIU to grab the early lead. Kick is on the way, and perfect. Switch to the uprights. So, 3-0, TIU with 429 remaining in the first quarter. St. Francis yet to answer. We'll be back. Cougar Football, Redeemer Radio, WRDF, 106.3 FM, Northeast Indiana. Here's a money-saving tip from Mumper, the number one name in insulation since 1956. Exposed attic ceiling joints and ductwork or new snow that quickly melts off your roof means you need to add insulation. We'll fill empty sidewall cavities with insulation, even through masonry aluminum or vinyl siding with no unsightly holes. Plus, we'll seal your crawl space with urethane foam for a total insulation package. Call Mumper Insulation at 432-7543 for a free, no-obligation energy analysis of your home. Welcome back, everybody. Well, we're in Deerfield, Illinois. I say we because uh, we're graced to have uh, the Judge Phil Hauk with us here today. And uh, we're actually expecting the third amigo, Art Mandelbaum. Uh, but as things turned out, uh, conflict uh, came with his family. So it's uh, the Judge and myself as now St. Francis looks to settle down and going against the wind. They got the ball. And this will be, I think, their third possession, Phil. And as they look really to yet to get anything really a substantial going offensively. Driving kickoff, that will go uh, well just beyond the end line. So it'll come out to the 20-yard line, and St. Francis will start first and 10 from the Cougar 20-yard line. Touchback, yeah, like line. we said, oh, that uh, defense or the offense needs to get on track. They're, the last two plays of the last drive, uh, Maurice Portillo, the, one of the second leading tackler in the Mid-States Football Association, of course the number one leading tackler is also on the CIU team, uh, blitz from the, I guess it would be from Ferrer's left side and put pressure on him both times, and USF didn't even touch him, so they're going to have to solve that problem real soon. Cougars are ready to go to work from their own 20-yard line. Ferrer barking up a signal. Short drop. Looks right, loads up, throws the ball, and a drop. In and out of the hands that time. Incomplete. So Ferrer throwing to his right and uh, trying to complete that ball. That was a very catchable ball, but incomplete. So it'll be second down in 10. And St. Francis, you know, a lot of times in the early going of a new season, it is the defense that leads the offense. But uh, we'll see how it goes. Sean Boswell was the intended receiver and normally a very sure-handed pass catcher. Monty McDowell, he's also lined up. The, they come up and press coverage, and they're going to blitz from the left side as well. Here's a run to the left and nothing there as the Dean now spins back to the right side and knocked down with the 40 inside the 20 back of 19. So the guy who had the passes covered that time. Mauricio Petillo and number 21, Justin Hackney. The 20 to the 19, so it's 15. Third down after the loss, third and 15 for St. Francis. And Joe, at this point, Ferrer is over for passing the ball. By the way, it could have started from the 25, so the loss has them back inside their 20. Here's Ferrer throwing the near side, looking for Coat. That ball, one hand to catch, and then he dropped it, but there was a penalty flag, and looks like that might be pass interference it's against Will pass. Carter. Flag well, with the chief, how they call it. They're trying to play physical against Coat. Coat, of course, 6'3", 215, the senior, 18 touchdown catches, averaged over 21 yards a year ago in receptions. 
And we'll wait, and that one does go against TIU. That's a big one on third and long. First, first down of the game for USF, Joe, you know, and that's a, that's a big one. And, you know, I was surprised to see Seth Coat in that situation with man-to-man coverage. Exactly. I didn't even see safety coming over. So they're moving the change, but they haven't moved the football. So we're still waiting for the officials to, to down, sort that down, all out. It is called as a first down, 10-yard penalty. Yeah, they move the ball on the penalties of the 29. It is a first down, first and 10. Barrera getting ready for the snap once again. Looks to throw. Blitz is coming. Screens Dean, 30, 35. Bobs his way near side, 40, 45. There was a block. That one may go against St. Francis as uh, Jason Nicodemus was trying to help his running back out. And let's see if that one really goes against St. Francis. Dean, uh, DJ Dean brought it all the way out across to the 45, but that one's coming back, and that one will hurt now St. Francis. So first TIU hurt by the penalty flag, and now St. Francis. 3 nothing with 3.32 remaining here in the opening quarter in favor of Trinity International. Blair is still without an actual completion. That pass was completed on the little uh, screen pass to the near side of the field on the last down, but uh, the play is negated due to the penalty, and the ball actually comes all the way back to the 28-yard line. So Blair's still looking for that first completion of the day, and what's for certain is going to be a, a, a post-passing offense. So it still will be first down and 10. That ball was moved back to the USF 28-yard line. Ferrer fakes. The blitz is coming. It's picked up. It throws for Cotenbook. This time the ball sailed a little bit. Very tough for Ferrer. By the way, the the and he was back to his feet. And be a little concerned because he took a little bit. Not a late hit as far as the penalty, but still after he released the ball, knocked to the turf. And it'll be second down and 10 with the ball just inside the Cougar 30-yard line. So, again, uh, the offense sputtering a little bit. Boswell and Mont- Monte McDays look wide to the right. And Seth Coat to the short side to the left. And once again, it's Rob Jarrell Carter. They up and press coverage once again on Coat. Here's Barrera. Looks right. Throws the ball up. And look, and that ball is incomplete intended for Boswell. But, again, well defended. They had uh, the quarterback out there, Daniel Harris. Harris actually got his hands on the ball, kicked it away, and it'll be third down and 10. So that play, the opening to the near side, still where Seth Holt was, Joe. Once again, man to man covered by Seth Holt. I think that play's going to go up, but then he's going to go back. He's going to go up, and he's going to go up, and he's going to go up, and he's going to yeah, that matchup between Cody goes 6-3 and Carter goes 5-10. So Seth is going to have the advantage. It's just a, a matter of getting the, the continuity between passer and pass catcher. Blitz coming. Ferrer dodges it, dumps the ball out, and leaning back, Monty McDowell got hands on the ball, but couldn't bring it in. Daniel Harris has it up. And looks like the Cougars will have to get the ball away. So the fourth rank, St. Francis Cougars, really have been bottled up pretty much in their own half of things of the field. And they trail it three to nothing. And Dan Harris gets the ball back once again. Spitnell comes on to kick it away. He'll wait for the snap inside his 20 at the 16-yard line. Raphael Williams back in punt return. He had a long punt return of 56 yards a year ago. Nice kick as Williams has time at the 27. Takes a look, spun around, breaks a tackle, works back to his right, Howard. Oh, nice move, but then wrapped up. The Cougars have him tackled at the TIU 30-yard line. But nice footwork by Rafael Williams. 43-yard punt against the Liz, and that's a good effort. He's got some practice First down of the day. Cougars with two safeties back now. 
And Burmeister stays in as quarterback for Trinity International. He's got Godfrey in motion once again. Here's a counter. No, it's an option pitch. And they look to Godfrey, and he'll gain a yard again. Quick reaction by St. Francis defensively Plus as Tony Cross. Cougars uh, defended that. Eric Dutton came up in run support, limits to a yard in the key. Game just across the 30 to the 31. Inside of two and a half minutes, time remaining in this first quarter. Cougars right now relying on their defense to try to hold TIU at bay. Trojans lead it three to nothing. Got the 25 yard field goal. That was good by their kicker, uh, Jeremiah Carter. Motion now, Hargis, and they'll pass the ball to him. Looking to turn the corner. Looked like they had a block in the back again, but Pearson Harsh comes across, makes the tackle. Contact was made right about the 32, number three yard line. So it'll bring up third down and still very long for TIU. So I'm impressed by Burmeister as a quarterback. He's offense extremely well, and it's a multiple offense. We've seen uh, them attacking from all different directions. Uh, he's a junior, and he started for just the latter half of the season last year. There's a senior on the bench, uh, Zach Chesser, who saw most of the action last year. But Burmeister won the won the job last year, and now is the starter on opening day 2016. Third down and seven coming up. Inside of 90 seconds remaining opening quarter, Lucas Sparks, part of a down three defensive lineman for St. Francis now from the left defensive end. Burmeister taking a look, guns the ball to the left. They've got a first down. Hit the open seam at about the 39. Yes, Scott Scott moves the chains as they will have it first and 10 at their own 43-yard line. Sun coming out here in Deerfield, Illinois. Temperature expected to get into the low 80s. Said there was about a 30% chance of maybe some isolated storms. We hope those stay away. A lot of rain here in the early morning hours and overnight. Upwards of one to two inches in some parts of the northwest suburbs. Dry right now, though. Godfrey in motion once again. Now they run the ball. Here's Burmeister and spun around and dropped. Great play defensively that time. St. Francis got penetration across the lane of scrimmage. Might have been Himmelgam, but uh, good play, and that will be a loss of one yard. I think you got that. Uh, Himmelgam making a good play. He penetrated against the read action and just blew that play up. But uh, some really good decisions have been made uh, by Baumeister on that on that read option. Now we're going to tick down to the end, I think, of the first quarter before we see another play. That means uh, we'll be going to a break with TIU and the Leafs. Final seconds ticking off the board. 3-0 Trinity International. Now they'll go against the win from right to left when we return to Leslie Fleischer Field. 3-0 TIU and the lead over the Leafs. 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 And we'll be back after this 60-second timeout. This is Cougar football on Redeemer Radio 106.3 FM, Northeast Indiana. Redeemer Radio is looking for a few good men and women to pray for the support of our work in proclaiming the truth and beauty of our Catholic faith. Can you provide prayer coverage for one hour out of the 56 hours of Fall share You're welcome to pray in Redeemer Radio's St. Gabriel Chapel or at home or at church. Prayers are needed Monday through Friday, October 24th through the 28th, 8 a.m. through 7 p.m. Sign up now at info at RedeemerRadio.com or call the station 888-436-9598. God bless you. Think of Briscoe Dentistry for your family's dental care. Dr. Todd Briscoe and team know that your body is more than just teeth and gums. Your oral health affects the performance ability of your entire body. And on the field or court, you want your body to perform at its best. So trust Dr. Briscoe and team to provide the ultimate in preventative, periodontal, orthodontic, restorative, and cosmetic dentistry. To optimize your body's performance, contact Dr. Briscoe at 260-486-9950 or on the web at briscoedentistry.com. Welcome back, everybody, with the Judge Phil Houck. Back with us for uh, today's season opener for USF on the road in Deerfield, Illinois. 3 nothing Trinity International. They got a 25-yard field goal from Jeremiah Carter. And St. Francis offensively, I don't know if it's the wind or just the opening game problems, but uh, they have not really meshed offensively at all. And now it's second down 11 for TIU. Burmeister, time of the pocket, throws over the middle. Looking, and that ball is picked off. 
Jerrell Holman's got it at the 20 and slides forward to the 24. So an interception for St. Francis as they get the ball back, keeping it 3 nothing in favor of TIU. And you look at the Jarrell Holman a year ago. He had two interceptions, seven passes broken up, nine passes defended, and 34 tackles in a big play defensively for St. Francis when they really needed one. Tri-State Warehousing is one of the most complete service-oriented companies in the warehousing field today. Located in Fort Wayne, Tri-State Warehousing is a 50,000 square foot dry and temperature controlled storage facility serving two-thirds of the continental U.S. with overnight rail service. The dedicated staff and specialty services of Tri-State Warehousing are known throughout the industry. For great things in store, call Tri-State Warehousing, 260-436-2010. That's 260-436-2010. Hello, sports fans. This is Father Bob Garrow, chaplain at Bishop DeWanger High School. It is time to get geared up for our fall sports season. Whether competing on the soccer field, golf, or cross-country course, volleyball court, or on the gridiron, we wish good luck and great sportsmanship to all our student athletes and their teams. May we become the saints we are called to be. St. Sebastian, pray for us. Back to live action here in Deerfield, Illinois. The Cougars tried to go vertical looking for set code once again, but again, the ball a little bit high. Code reached out with a right hand, got a hand on it, nearly made a, a uh, one-handed spectacular catch, but couldn't pull it in. Now on second down and 10, whistles blew right at the snap. And we'll wait, and uh, not sure what that's about, but it's still going to be second down and 10 with USF. After the interception by Darrell Holman, second and 10 from their own 24-yard line. Code lines up once again. And uh, here is a run to the right side, and there's P.J. Dean cutting back across the 30 and fights for extra yardage up to about the 33. Looks like he's close to the first down. It depends on the spot of the ball, but maybe just a tad short. Joe Cruz came out on that drive right after the interception and went for the whole run ball over the middle. But the double coverage was on over the middle against Seth Cove. Now we've seen him in more single coverage uh, when he's slanted towards the sideline for the Cougars to come back to that scheme later in the game. It is a first down, so the Cougars uh, move the chains. Here's a quick out pass. Gettner's got it. Curls forward, tripped up at the 40, but he's going to pick another two yards, maybe three yards up. So Zach Gettner who uh, had 14 catches a year ago and over 100 receiving yards. He'll pick up eight yards on that first down call. And the Cougars, little by little, Phil, starting to put things together, moving now with the win left to right, but trailing it three to nothing. Clock moves inside of 14 minutes here in the first half. St. Francis with two wide to the right. Coat is split to the short side to the left. It'll be second down and short, and now penalty flags fly again. There's still 14 on the play clock, but movement and that will be a procedure for all against St. Francis. St. Francis. A year ago, the Cougars ended up uh, with over 76, nearly 77 yards a game in penalties. That ranked them number 11 in all uh, MSFA teams. TIU did very well, uh, averaged only 49 yards and change in penalties, ranked second in the MSFA. So it'll be second down and seven after that uh, penalty. Same set, Monte McDowell wide to the net, near side. Right now, the slot receiver is uncovered. One of the cornerbacks, uh, the safeties has got him, but well off. Those are the wide open. Here's the throw to him, and that is Akeem Kelsaw. Took a big hit, but holds on at the 38-yard line, and that is great for a number of different ways. Kelsaw took the hit. He's going to be fine, and also had a nice pass reception for a first down. Yeah, pattern, uh, and that's going to be something that the Cougar coaches will try to exploit if they're going to have a safety on them in some 20, 25 yards off. Screen ball coming up, a low ball, and that is a great play defensively. 
That's the play had much more. They did trying to set up the screen pass, but boy, Riley Schusler snipped it out and uh, stopped it. He had three quarterback hurries last year, as we mentioned, 11 and a half tackles for loss, 152 tackles, number one, and hold St. Francis to a minimal gain of two yards, but it uh, was spotted just outside the TIU 40 yard line, second down and eight. Three nothing. TIU getting the 25 yard field goal to grab the lead as we are into the second quarter now. And Ferrer, this time from the right side, catch mine. And uh, they'll bring in uh, Aaron Harris. There's a throw to the left, but that one sailed looking on a clock. A little down and out pattern run by Sean Boswell. And Ferrer looked like he tried to guide that ball in there. It's very difficult with the gusting wind that now appears to be across uh, cross the field. Ferrer wants to do it. He wants to go down the field. But the weather is, is causing problems with this cold style. Probably going to have to go to shorter routes, uh, up over the middle, inside of underneath the cover, and deal with the connecting wind. You know, Kelso comes into the ball game, and let's see where Keen is. Now he splits out to the right side and does have a quarterback up in press coverage. So a little different look defensively. Here's Barrera, checks off, looks in the middle, throws, and nice. He's got Code outside the 25 to the 20 as he runs to his right side and rumbles all the way down to about the 18, maybe the 17 yard line. At that time, pass over money to number 11, Seth Code. Good big play for St. Francis. Seth Code came out of the slot that time, and that's one thing Brad Donnelly talked about wanting to do to get him open was to confuse the defense by moving him around to different positions on the field at the line of scrimmage. Still, one of the things we're seeing is that slot receiver is being covered by a safety who's 20, 25 yards off. The Cougar coaches have caught that. Now, here's a run by Dean. He fights his way down close to the 15-yard line. So that will be a gain of about four, maybe close to five yards, four-yard gain, let's call it. So they'll spot the ball, and those will the ball right at the 15-yard line. 11-22 remaining in the first half. St. Francis, who really uh, – Put a lot of points on the board a year ago, averaged 46.9 points a game. That was number one in the MSFA. Scoreless so far with just over 11 minutes remaining in this first half. It'll be second down and seven. Ball's at the 15 of TIU. Dean offset to the left side. They'll counter run coming up, and he's got a little running room. He gets to the 10, and that should be very close. Maybe, well, about a half a yard short of the first down stick. But P.J. Dean getting up a little bit gingerly after that hit. Kind of chopped an ankle out from underneath him. Efficiency in the red zone, important for any football team. And it was an area that USF uh, really concerned with in the offseason. That was an area that they wanted to see improvement at this season. Well, they're in the red zone now. Let's see how it turns out. And they'll bring Aaron Harris in, a senior at 205. A year ago, <laughs> wind gusting up again. I can't even read the numbers. <laughs> we'll tell you when we get a second here. It is third down, and let's call it two, but a timeout called by Ferrer. Let's keep things right here with 10, 10 remaining in the first half, and we'll give you those Aaron Harris numbers now. Season ago, he weighed 175 times for 416 yards, averaged over five and a half yards carrying, and ran for five touchdowns. Also had nine catches for 111 yards, and one pass for each touchdown. Really a lot of talent at that running back position for the Cougars, as we mentioned a couple of times. Uh, Justin Green, DJ Dean, Aaron Harris, also Nicodemus back after his injury last season. You've got four guys who, uh, with quite a bit of experience, uh, they are expected to, to really spearhead that Cougar running attack. But right now, I think uh, Ferrer back to the line of scrimmage didn't like exactly what he saw, and he knows how important this down is. Third and short, the Cougar offense has really sputtered for most of the football games so far. They trail on the scoreboard three to none. They didn't like what he saw or didn't like the play he was in and couldn't get out of it. All the time out like a veteran uh, player he is, and uh, decided they ought to discuss it on third and short. If St. Francis goes ahead and scores, they can look back, and there were two key receptions, one for Keen Kelsall, the other from Seth Coates, that uh, really have set up this potential scoring drive. But now it's third down and two. Ball at the 10-yard line. 
tight formation now. One wide, coat to the right side. And two ring backs in there. An off-tackle run, and there's going to be a touchdown run. Leaping over with the tacklers is Aaron Harris from 10 yards out at the 10 5 mark. And, uh, he made that look rather easy. It's a great play call and a great job at the line of scrimmage by the Kringers. Trinity was keen on some Number motion. Going to the far side Aaron of the field, and Aaron Harris just slammed it back across, going the other direction. Everybody from Trinity went the one way. Harris had an easy route into the into the end zone, and the Cougars are on the board for the first time since 2016, and they've taken the lead here today. Here comes Ryan Nixon to attempt the extra point. Spitnail, the holder, right-footed kick is on the way, and that is good. So St. Francis took them a while, but on the board with the Aaron Harris touchdown run. They lead at 7-3. 10 5 remains in the first half. We'll be back to Deerfield, Illinois. This is Cougar Football on the Road on Redeemer Radio, 106.3 FM, Northeast Indiana. Amore's Pizza proudly supports Catholic sports. Try our Chicago-style stuffed pizza made with top-quality meats and cheeses. Your mouth will taste the difference. We also offer gluten-free options or many unique items. Amore's Pizza is located at 933 East DuPont Road, right off Coldwater. Full menu and specials can be found at amorespizza.net or call 490-9099. Amore's Pizza, where our food is made with love. Cougars in the lead now here on the road, 7-3, to three, and they'll kick it away. The wind uh, will be behind as they kick it left to right for the International. First time they will be back to uh, receive it. Boy, they are expecting the ball really to be driven with that wind. The Cougars scoring drive show, eight plays, 76 yards, four minutes and 55 seconds. Keep on the game. Two touchdowns, the two long passes. Nick's ready to kick it away. Waits for the go-ahead from the officials. Cougars playing their first two games this season on the road next Saturday in the night game at Olivet Nazarene down in Bourbon, Illinois. Nick's is ready, gets the go-ahead. Drives it high, end over end. That will be going up five yards deep into the end zone. They're going to bring it out across the five to the 10, 15, up the middle, and across the 20 to the 24, 25 yard line. There's a penalty flag thrown at the CI 242. So that uh, return, Quentin Reeder out of the end zone, the five yards deep, but we'll check the uh, the penalty flag. Meanwhile, the teams they go to their respective sides, getting their instructions from their respective coaches, and we wait for the indication. Jerry Frumpy is our referee today. Block in the back against St. Francis. It's a little weird on a kickoff against the kicking team. Personal foul call. Uh, blocking in the back that is very unusual. When I saw the flag go fly up near midfield, though, you had to figure it was something unusual. And something on St. Francis game. So I didn't see it. I was, my focus was up the field where the return was taking place. But Trinity starts with decent field position now at their 35. First and 10 Trojans moving from right to left. J.J. Burmeister stays in there at quarterback. And let's see if they've got branches. The running back lined up. They'll, they'll hand it a give up the middle, and uh, they find some running room that time. It was Isaac French. There goes my scoring sheet. (laughs) Well, the wind, it kind of reminds me of Concordia a couple of years ago. But that was good for a first down carry by Isaac Branch. Going to have to test your memory now on the scoring 25-yard field goal by Jeremiah Carter, then the 10-yard touchdown run by Aaron Harris. And our your memory is perfect. Now it is. About an hour from now. Hard just comes in wide to the right side. And Wendell splits wide to the left. Cougar corner is about five yards off. They run the ball, and that's a not, nothing doing that time. As St. Francis was waiting for that play at the pass. James Jamison out of Carroll High School, a true freshman, got in there and uh, made defend, defensive penetration across the line of scrimmage. 
And I tell you what, we saw him a lot at Carroll. He's the real deal. And one, of, one of the players that uh, everybody talked about when I would ask the question the last couple of weeks, what freshman do you think will make an impact? And James was one name that was mentioned every time. I want to thank a nice young lady gathered up my scoring sheet. And we've got that, you know, this reminds me of basic training. You've got a, 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 a a pole that you've got to climb up, so fence. So there was movement, defensive right side, but no penalty flight. Burmeister dumps it off, and here's a run for a first down after the catch. A little middle screen to Marcus again. They've uh, linked up a couple of times between those two Burmeister and Marcus, and that'll bring the ball out to midfield, first and ten. Lock now inside of eight and a half minutes, time remaining this first half. But TIU getting a little confidence building once again, converting on that play. And they'll have a very good field position now at midfield, first and 10, moving right to left. Still huddled up with 15 on the play clock. Now they come up to the line of scrimmage. Big offensive line, as we mentioned, they average 293 a man tackle to tackle. They have two protectors either side, this time of Burmeister, as he looks to branch, hands it off, but he's brought down, and that was a great play. Christian Johnson shot through the gap and it got him in the backfield for a loss of about three yards. Johnson with a really nice job of trailing that play and catching up to the running back to, to get the tackle for a loss. Johnson, 6'2", 276, a senior at five sacks a year ago, nine tackles for loss. That one, a loss of three. So second down and 13. Burmeister came over to the near sidelines to have a chat with his coaches now. Clock ticking its way towards seven minutes remaining in this first half. Took the Cougars a while, but they finally have the lead. But now here comes TIU trying to answer. 7-3 our score. And here's the handoff again. Run right side and Reader got into the second level inside the Cougar 40 and he's had one tackle away from bringing it to the house. When Reader picks him up, playing him down, and that's a big play by Trinity International. They have another first down at the Cougar 38-yard line. Eric Dunton on the tackle, the outside linebacker on that side, the field for uh, Carroll Space School. He finally caught the ball carrier who looked like he was shot out of a cannon. We hadn't heard a lot about Reader, but uh, very quick and uh, big play. Boy, he gets a lot of congratulations here on the TIU sidelines from his teammates. So, potential drive in the making now for TIU. Motion Godfrey, left to right behind the line of scrimmage. Short drop for Meister throws to him. He's got the catch and then gobbled up and driven down by Lee Stewart. So, St. Francis right there, well defended on that play. And let's see. They're going to move the chains. Yeah, it'll be a gain of about two, uh, maybe three yards on the play. So let's call it let's second down and eight. So Stewart came up and uh, just shot through it. Wrap up Godfrey. You could see that play developing in front of him very easily. Burmeister just coming back into the huddle now, and we're at the 544 mark time remaining in this first half. 7-3, St. Francis. Hargis. Sent wide to the right window to the left side. Godfrey up in the slot at the near side. Howard's got him defensively. Burmeister out of the pistol. Got Branch offset behind him to the left. High snap. Burmeister trying to pass that, hand that ball off. And Branch is driven back. Eric Dunton with authority spun him around. But the Cougars might have jumped defensively. Let's see if it's going to be encroachment. Uh, that's exactly right. It negates a pretty good effort by the center of that uh, St. Francis defense. Playing very aggressively in this football game, but unfortunately sometimes that aggressiveness has cost them because if Glenn Trinity is able to avoid that first line of attack by the Cougars, they've found a lot of room to put the football in space. And credit Burmeister went with the hard count, and that drew the defensive right side. A couple of players for USF jump on the gun. So now it's going to be second down and four with a ball at the USF 31-yard line. Kristen Shears brings him up to the line of scrimmage. He's the center today. Big fella, 6'1". Junior goes 290. And again, they'll look at the branch. Branch off tackle right. Cracks inside the Cougar 30. Got to about the 29. Maybe another half a yard, but it's short of the first. That'll be third down and about a half a yard. 
third and one. Third down and one officially with 440 remaining in this first half. So let's see what the TIU comes up with. They've had some success on crossing patterns, and uh, Grant at times able to run the ball. Definitely four down territory, and we know that their kicker has a very strong leg as well. Of course, he would be going against the win if they were to sell the field goal if they can't convert here on this field. Arges split to the short side to the right. Branch behind. Burmeister offset. There's a little motion now back to the right side behind the line of scrimmage. Brant looking to move, and he's wrapped up and bites back to the 30. So he will lose some yardage. It'll bring up fourth down and closer to two yards now in a decision for Coach Keith Wirick. Wirick. Lucas Sparks is credited with getting through there to make the stop, Phil. So I think the ball would be hard, so it would be a free eight yard field goal if they decide to attempt it. Trinity's uh, got their regular offense out of the field. They're going to go for it on fourth and about two yards. Expect them to try to put something yeah, in there. They've had a crossing pattern. And with this screen, it's hard to slide up right to the right side. Wendell to the near side. He's not touched the ball so far today. There was movement, and that might go against EIU. They kind of came out of their stance. And it will be preceded. That will cost them five yards. Instead of fourth and three, it's going to be fourth and eight. So ball start. And that hurts when you uh, now with the ball being moved back to the 35-yard line. Yeah, that penalty crosses EIU a lot. Godfrey checks back into the ball game. They've used him a lot with motion. And they've got two wide either side of the field. The running back is Branch. In motion again, Godfrey to the other side. Burmeister rolling to the right side. He's got some running room. And it steps out of bounds. He will not get there. So the Cougars hold and down to fourth down stop. And they'll take over the football inside their own 35-yard line with 241 remaining in the half. But the wind behind St. Francis as they lead it 7-3. to three. Good to stop. Good to, good stand that time by the Cougar defense. So that drive took over seven minutes off the clock by TRU. But that's, that's a victory, if nothing else, in a close football game. USF now with only two minutes and 41 seconds on the clock. They take over with decent field position at their own 37. Uh, let's see if that open can continue to click that you did on the last series down. So Ferrer brings his offensive unit onto the field once again. Too wide to the right side. Again, the slot being uncovered except by the safe. And then there was movement. We saw that so many times last year. And you would hope that uh, that it approved the procedure calls against the Francis. And uh, first and 10 just invariably seems to become first and 15, and you really hate to see it, Bill. And you especially see it, in the, it seems like, in the first game of the season. I, I guess you expect to see that. You see it uh, all over in the high school games last week, and I saw lots of early mistakes. You hope that's all it is, is that it's first game jitters and they'll get those things worked out. Boswell is the slot man to the right side, again covered by a safety, but he is 5, 10, 15 yards deep. Now it cheats up a couple of steps. And here's Ferrer looking to throw it. Now checks off, flush to his right side, heavily flag is thrown. Here's a catch at the 41, but uh, that may be coming back. A little sliding catch by Sean Boswell. But the penalty flag is going to move St. Francis back once again. That was a hold against the Cougars. And a good job now to do a hold by Pereira. Showing patience and finally finding his own man. That's Pereira that's a very accurate passing and very patient in that pocket. But the two goes for naught with the pick one off. Now that's two penalties in a row that are really put a hold uh, in place for the Cougars. That'll back St. Francis up to its own 22 yard line now. So the Cougars moving backwards. Still first down, but they would have to get out to their own 37 to pick up a first down. They've got three downs to work with. Here's a quick screen coming right side, looking for some uh, 
Moving. There's another penalty flag thrown. Boswell moving his way across the 30 to 34. And if this goes against St. Francis again, that's McDowell. That's going to be three penalties in a row. Let's go up with the penalty flag. Yeah, that's going to be Penalties against the Cougars back them up now inside their 15 at the 13 yard line. McDowell, he was looking around. He said, "You can't be, you can't be serious that that penalty's on me." He was in disbelief, but it was a, the flag was thrown, and now it's first down and forever. Barrera, we're looking to get some of the yardage back. Let's just come and screens the ball. That's a bobble ball, but caught. That was uh, Justin Green who's in there now. So Justin Green getting his first chance to touch the football. Joe Justin Green had a long place so he could have run on that play, but he stumbled after following the ball a little bit. But he had two blockers out in front. Uh, that play had a lot of potential. That's really what you need to do. When it's first to 28, you just want to get a chunk of yardage. Well, uh, the chunk actually turned into just a couple of yards, but a positive play nonetheless. Cougars now with the ball at their own 16, still second down and long, very long. And Ferrer looks the throw, guns it out on the far side. That's the drop. Gidner tried to turn and run with it, didn't have the football. So that's been a little bit of the story. A couple of drops, if that helps St. Francis in the first half. And now with 91 seconds remaining, it'll be third down in still very long. You know, I'm not so sure that you don't just kind of run the football here to get that clock running so that when you have to, you know, like you could punch it on fourth down, uh, you can block this clock and try to see. Well, your point's well taken with 91 seconds. A lot of teams on third and forever would actually punt the ball right now. Trying to catch the defense by surprise. But Ferrer wants to throw, pumps, punt, holds it down, throws over the middle, and that's kicked ball away. Good defense. Coach ball with the intended receiver. But Brad Mowbray was there to make the play. Ducked in front, knocked the ball away, and bring, bring up fourth down. Minute 25 remains, and TIU will have a chance to get points on the board, trailing at 7 to 3. Lots of man coverage on the Cougar receivers in this game without safety help. We're going to see one of those go. I mean, Kelsaw was so close on that play, the ball that delivered a little higher. I think he comes down with it, and I think he's got a long ways to run, maybe all the way to the end, though. But credit where credit is due, and TIU has been right there defensively most of the game. Here's a punt by Spitnail that is fielded at the 43-yard line and a run to the right side, running room, 40, 45, 30, got a chance to score, and here they go. It'll be a punt return touchdown. Rock Mill Williams good for 40. Well, wait a minute, there's a penalty flag, and also a Cougar down at about the 49-yard line. But right now, that would be a punt return touchdown of about 57 yards. So I think it will come back, though, and it's more action on Haver. He's sitting on the two here at about 45 yards. The players are already out there helping them. You've got to believe that, and it's right next to where that flag went down. You've got to believe that that's going to be an illegal block. And they have been responsible for, for uh, springing that play. Good news for Haver, at least he is up on his feet at this point, and it's going to walk off the field uh, with the assistance of a couple of players. Yeah, he was testing that right leg and now not wanting to put any any weight on it whatsoever, so he will be assisted off the field. And, you know, sometimes, that, I'm not saying at this level, but you might see it at other levels of college football where they kind of enhance, but this is the real deal. He was really hurt on that play. Well, I don't think there's any doubt about that, so you can tell that You've been watching too much soccer, by the way. I think if you're talking about making it free. But uh, in any event, uh, you know, a great run back uh, for CIU is, is negated to the Cougars' benefit uh, because that that was going to put CIU with a likely lead going into the locker room now. 
CIU will start at the 42 yard line with just a little over a minute left on the clock, 109. And they've got a fairly long way to go, but they do have good time out there. Branch checks in as the running back for TIU. Burmeister is the quarterback, but now it's first and 10 at the 42. Here's a throw to the right side, and that ball is caught. Argus on the receiving end brings into the Cougar territory inside the 45 to the 43. Cougars, that was Coward, who was rotating. He's trying to reach behind and literally got a hand on the ball, but couldn't find it. Really great timing by Burmeister is played when his receiver was in between the two zones, and he just threaded the needle. First and 10, Burmeister steps up and then is hammered down at the 49. Ball popped free, St. Francis has got it! Fumble recovery as Burmeister cocks it up. Pearson Harnish was there, but uh, let's see who does get it for St. Francis as the Cougars will get the ball now. And that might have been Jordan May, or was that Hellgam? Joe, but Burmeister definitely caught the football up. USF uh, capitalized the first time that there was, first time that there was a turnover in the game, and uh, that was a bonus interception. They turned around and drove the ball 76 yards after that. Now, they're in business with 49 seconds on the clock at their own 49 yard line with two timeouts. Now, Ferrer brings the Cougars to the line of scrimmage. Two men in the slot. Ron looks up field, and he's got a receiver. That's code at the 40 yard line. Code with a nice run after catch, and he gets out of bounds. That'll take the clock down to 39 seconds. And with stepping out of bounds, having first and 10 now at the 35 yard line. So, first, St. Francis dodges the 57 yard punt return touchdown on a penalty against CIU. Now they get a big catch from Seth Coat, first and 10 at the Trojan 35. Trying to manage the clock and get in the end zone to expand on what is now a 7-3 hard-fought lead. Now Jerry Frumpy, our referee, waves his arms, wants to talk to his officials, and I'm not sure what this is about. Well, the good news is the clock has stopped. Uh, but Brer brings brought the Cougars up to the line of scrimmage. They were ready to roll in this two-minute drill. And, uh, and the referee walked in, and uh, now he's going to the sideline. I think he's, he's asking for an adjustment clock. I think they're looking maybe to put 39. I thought I heard the official down on the say 39. They put 38, so it's a compromise. We don't have uh, the, the referee mic, which is unusual. I thought that was true. But maybe it's not working today. Sometimes things don't work, right, Joe? I heard that, brother. First and ten. Here's Ferrer wanting the throw. Blitz has picked up, throws the left side, but that one is wide and incomplete. Looking for, again, trying to find receiver out there to the far side, but no chance on that one. So that stopped the clock. Took just two seconds off the coat, off the clock, intended for set coat. If you're thinking field goal, Ryan Nix was 7-7 seven seven last year for the Cougars. Of course, they need to move the football a little bit more there at the 35. He had a long of, a long of 42 last year. Second down and 10. Cougars at the line of scrimmage once again. Two wide to the right side. And uh, here we go as Ferrer steps up in the pocket, throws again off target. Code had to reach out to his right behind him. Ferrer, nice job of stepping up the pocket, but not on target with the throw. Ferrer's just been a little out of sync all day today. Uh, that would have put the Cougars in the great field goal position, about 20 yards up the field. Set Code sat down in the zone, found a little opening, and was standing there uh, with nobody within a few yards of him. Not to ever. Cougars on third downs a year ago were 58 of 150 for 39%. That ranked them third best in the MSFA. They've got to get to the 25-yard line on this snap. Here's Ferrer. Watch the throw over the middle. He's got Kelsaw, and he dropped the ball on his fingertips. That was a little bit beyond his reach. But again, very catchable ball, and the Cougars have not, the receivers have not helped their quarterback either. That was a good pass by Ferrer on the corner put the Cougars down to at least about the 10-yard line with great field position with still 25 seconds on the clock and two timeouts. Instead, 
Uh, this drive may come to an end on fourth down, and the Cougars going to talk about it and use one of those timeouts right here. Timeout. Yeah, and I tell you what, we will step out as well. Not exactly sure where we are because we had some technical difficulty early. 25 seconds remain. We'll take a quick 30 second break. Cougar football on the road on Redeemer Radio, 106.3 FM, Northeast Indiana. Diamonds are a girl's best friend, and diamonds are forever. And since 1988, Peter Franklin has been bringing you the finest diamonds imported from overseas diamond cutters. Peter Franklin Jewelers. Jewelry created from concept to completion by our master goldsmiths on staff. Peter Franklin Jewelers with three locations to serve you. New Haven, DuPont Road, and Angola. Remember, it's not just jewelry. It's Peter Franklin. With the judge, Phil Hauk, one of the three original amigos, I'm Joe Parson. Welcome back to Deerfield, Illinois. We have had a uh, bulk of clouds, but no rain so far. And, you know, they've really got a great atmosphere, Phil Hauk, out here. They've got, the, you know, kind of a picnic area and a rise on the far side of the field. We'll talk more about that right now. Back to business, fourth down and 10. St. Francis needs to reach the 25. And there was a whistle once again. And is that going to be procedure against St. Francis? And I tell you what, Coach D is not going to be happy. And that is exactly the call. And uh, the Cougars have shot themselves penalties a lot of times in the first half of this football game. You know, they do lead on the scoreboard 7-3, to three, but it hasn't been the offensive performance that they expected coming into this football game. Now, instead of needing 10 yards, they need 15 on this fourth down call. Balls move back to the 40, and that pretty much negates, I would think, an attempt of a field goal by Nix. And now it's going to be Trinity International wants to talk things over. So we'll keep things right here. And, uh, again, wanted to take a look at that schedule coming up tonight. A very a big ball game uh, among top ten ranked teams uh, down in Indianapolis. And it's St. Texas on the road playing at the very against the defending national champion Knights. Other games elsewhere, the MSFA today, it's Taylor at uh, They're on the road traveling to Davenport, new entry to the MSFA. And uh, we'll see uh, Dan- Davenport, by the way, uh, later in the year, they're at, on the outskirts of Grand Rapids. And the other ball game, Missouri Baptist, they are also playing against Bethel today. Everybody else waits a week. And uh, classes have not yet started at St. Francis. So uh, it was a great opportunity, Kevin Donnelly said, uh, for his team to kind of bond together, come together. Called it NFL Week, a, ch- a chance not only to, on the field, practice, but also do some uh, study work. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, Kevin, I talked to him about the chemistry of this football team, and he says, well, you never know what the chemistry is until the season's over. But he was very positive about the way things had developed in the off season with so many players having shown up for offseason work. Uh, particularly this summer, how many Cougars came in for regular workout theater during the summer and prepared for this season. Cougars need 15 on this snap. 25 seconds remain in the half. Ferrer looking to make a play. Blitz is coming from the outside. Steps up, throws over the middle. He's got Cody. He's got it at the five, and he scores. Fourth and 15, a 40-yard touchdown toss with 18 seconds remaining, and it will run to 13-7 in favor of St. 13-3. They've got the wrong score on the wrong way, but it'll be 13-3 in favor of the Cougars. You know, you keep going back to the well, and Joe, we, we talked about it just a couple minutes ago. They were close on a lot of those, and, and it was just a matter of time before they were going to finally complete one of those long ones, either Coat or to Kelsaw, and it was going to go for a big play, and it came at the perfect time for the Cougars. They're now threatening to go up 14-3 to going into the locker room. Nick's on to attempt the extra point, 68-76 to last year for 89 points. That was third best among kickers in the MSFA, and missed this one. Missed it, so it remains 13-3 with a timeout. And don't still want to talk a little bit about the time, you know, that Ferrer had time to deliver the ball, and on time and on deliver he was. You know, with a great receiver, with a great receiver like Seth Coates, you know, you just simply, uh, if you can give him enough time, he's going to find a way to get open. And Seth, it was a simple uh, post pattern that he was running uh, out of the uh, from the near side of the field. Uh, Ferrer had a long, deep drop, and they needed 15 yards to get the first down. And uh, 
Seth was able to find the ball, made a perfect catch. Frere really delivered the ball in a great place. So the Cougars, unfortunately, with a missed extra point, will go into the locker room in all likelihood up 10 points, although there is still 18 seconds left in the first half of this football game, and they're now teeing the ball up, uh, looking to kick the ball deep to a dangerous, as we know, returner for uh, TIU who ran uh, a punt back last time, but it was negated by a uh, penalty. That's Quentin Reeder. He's deep for TIU, and the ball is teed up. Quentin Reeder is back deep, waiting at the goal line. He ran one out from about three or four yards deep in the end zone previously, so 18 seconds remaining, and TIU will get the ball to start in the second half, and now they trail by 10 here at home. They were 0 for the season in home games here at this field. Low line drive squid ball comes up and fielded by one of the up people of the 22, run across the 30 to about the 31-yard line, and that's where the Trojans, with now 13 seconds on the clock, will go back to work offensively in the uh, final seconds of this first half. So it took St. Francis for a while to get untracked here. They trailed early on 3 to nothing, and they did not get on the board until the second quarter, but now back-to-back touchdowns and 13 unanswered points have given them a 13-3 lead. And that drive for USF, four plays, 21 seconds, and the Cougars moved the ball 51, 51 yards in the key play, the 45-yard touchdown pass, Seth Coat, and the Cougars go up 13-3. to three. The extra point was no good, and TIU is just going to run the clock out. Yeah, they take the victory formation, so they're content to go to halftime, trailing it here at home by 10, 13-3, with a timeout at Leslie Frazier Field. So we will step out and look back at our halftime show and uh, recap the scoring and tell you more about this first half here with the 2016 season opener for USF on the road here in Deerfield, Illinois, 13-3 for the fourth-ranked Cougars in the lead at halftime. With the judge, Bill Hawk, I'm Joe Parson, back with more in our halftime presentation to Cougar football on Redeemer Radio, 106.3 FM, Northeast Indiana. Redeemer Radio gladly thanks Dr. Mark Stoner, a St. Jude parishioner, for underwriting a portion of our programming. Dr. Stoner offers comprehensive dentistry for every family member. Dr. Stoner can be found at 9830 Auburn Road, For more information regarding all your dental needs, it can be found on the web at markstonerdds.com or at 260-484-4181. Are you looking for an orthopedic specialist? Ortho Northeast has been serving the community for over 50 years with offices in three convenient locations. Look for the location nearest you. Dr. John Pritchard is a board-certified orthopedic surgeon with 20 years of experience with ONE and can assist you with the best treatment plan for your knee or shoulder pain. Dr. John Pritchard is looking forward to meeting you and helping with all orthopedic needs. Call Dr. Pritchard at 260-484-8551 or visit the web at www.orthone.com. It's the Halftime Report with scores, stats, and insights. Here's Joe and the sports team. Welcome back, everybody, with the Judge Phil Hout. Glad you could join us here in Windy. Well, they call it the Windy City, and we're, we're not far. By the way, the Bears were playing today. They kicked off about 12 noon local time, so a lot going on here in the Chicago area. And then the White Sox are playing tonight at the U.S. Cellular Field, which is going to change their name here in November. And uh, we're, meanwhile, we're uh, in the north suburbs of uh, Deerfield, Illinois. Judge Phil Hauk is with us at halftime. And the good news, Phil, we can talk about a Cougar lead. But, boy, this was anything but uh, vintage Cougar efficiency as they struggled offensively but finally got finally got things going. And a couple of touchdowns in the second quarter have given them the lead. Well, it seemed like it was just going to be a matter of time before that passing game got clicking because – uh, you know, with great receivers like Akeem Kelsaw and Seth Coates, uh, and they were open, but uh, some pretty good plays by TIU that they were making defensively had put the lid on it for most of the first half, but uh, Cougars taking advantage of some turnovers in the football game. Uh, Holman with his interception, the Cougars came back and drove the ball uh, 75 yards after that for their first touchdown, capped off by Harrison's 
uh, touchdown run from the 10 on a key uh, third down conversion play. And then late in the first half, um, when the Cougars got the ball back on a fumble, they were able to capitalize once again. They misfired on their first three plays of the drive, but then on fourth down, fourth and 15 from the 45 yard line, uh, Ferrer found Coat over the middle, so USF able to capitalize on two turnovers. They missed the extra point and of course 13 to three. So the uh, finally the Cougar offense uh, clicking a little bit and USF in the lead at halftime. Bishop Lures High School, a Catholic educational community that instills each student's dignity, integrity, respect, and responsibility. Catch the Lures spirit at www.bishoplures.org. That's www.bishoplures.org. Well, I just felt a couple of drops as the clouds begin to gather up a little bit out of the southwest. Unless that was Phil spinning, but I. <laughs> but uh, hopefully the rain stay away. Uh, here, the not expected. They said uh, maybe a chance of an isolated uh, thunderstorm, but uh, only about a. Really, have not had any rain in this area since about 10, 10:30 this morning. In fact, the sun came out a little bit uh, around that uh, 10, 10:30 mark, and then uh, also uh, during the first half of this ball game briefly. But right now, a very pleasant Monday day, though, I'll put it that way, 80 degrees. Uh, blustery winds, though, kicking up. Uh, they said 12 miles out of the, 12 miles an hour out of the south-southwest, but uh, at times it uh, seems to be even uh, higher than that. Let's uh, take a look at the scoring, as there was no scoring by either team until Jeremiah Carter got the Trojans on the board with a 25-yard field goal in the first quarter. That was all the scoring that occurred, 3-0 TIU. And then uh, Phil mentioned the interception by Jarrell Holman gave uh, the Cougars possession their own 24-yard line. They were able to produce points out of that uh, turnover and uh, was culminated by a 10-yard touchdown run by Aaron Harris at the 10.05 mark. Knicks uh, made the extra point, and it made it 7-3. Cougars had their first lead of the day, first lead of this season. Then uh, a fumble recovery by Lucas Sparks actually caused the fumble and uh, Cougars got the ball again at their own 40. They were able to uh, manage the clock and then the, the big play really was after a couple of penalties and we, we probably need to talk more about the penalties because there were a boatload of them against St. Francis in the first half. They ended up with a fourth down and 15 call and they dialed up Ferrer to set coach good for a 40-yard touchdown toss with just 18 seconds remaining, the extra point attempt by Knicks was not good, however, and that leaves us where we are here at halftime at 13 to three. And um, you know, Phil, we, we talked early about the penalties. Cougars were well towards the bottom of the MSFA in penalties. They averaged almost 77 yards a game in penalties. You compare that to TIU at just 49. That's almost half as few penalties. And uh, the Cougars just. Uh, you know, you know, there's always that fine line. You want your team to be aggressive, but you've got to know the rules, especially a lot of uh, illegal procedure calls, uh, procedure calls uh, that have really seemed to just hamper St. Francis the last couple of years. Well, that's absolutely true, and that's what's happened a lot in the first half of this football game. Uh, they got the one uh, set of downs there where the Cougars have uh, an easy conversion play, and then, of course, they go outside and it becomes a hard conversion play where you add the five yards to it. You know, it looked like it was going to happen again there at the end of the first half. Then they went from 4th to 10. Go up the line for takes the, takes the Cougars up the line of scrimmage, and you have another procedure penalty against you. And so it's 4th to 15th. Well, you know, that all got made okay. And uh, that code was the middle of made a, a great catch in stride and, and win at the end zone. But key mistakes, you hope that you solve those a little bit after the first game of the season. You know, let's talk a little bit about Seth Coat. Uh, you know, twice he is, well, in fact, maybe as many as three times, he has had uh, missed receptions, but not for lack of trying. He's reached out and nearly had Odell Beckham type of one-handed catches. But, uh, you know, it's been more on Ferrer and Nick uh, as needed to settle down a little bit, to get into a groove a little bit, uh, some rhythm. And, and playing quarterback is so much about confidence. You know, when you have success, it builds success. And hopefully the success that St. Francis saw at the end of this first half is going to carry over now into the second half. Well, and I would expect the, the 
you know, we, we ought to talk about how well TIU played in that first half. Uh, we knew coming into this football game that they were going to be an improved team from a year ago. When you look at the experience uh, that they returned and that they had settled on a quarterback late in the season who's been very impressive in the, I thought, the first half of the game. He's uh, thrown the ball accurately and he's directed uh, the read option well also. So, yeah, you played well. They didn't come out particularly intimidated by this high-powered offense, I think, for USF. They were willing to press a little bit in their coverage, uh, take some chances with some man-to-man coverage, and it worked a lot. But then it bit them a couple of times, and it bit them one time really big on that score right before the second half because you got to have more than just single coverage. Single coverage is no coverage on Seth Coat, really, uh, because he's so good at going up and getting uh, above other defenders to catch the football that if you can get the ball anywhere near him, he's usually going to catch it unless you've got uh, somebody coming over the top to try and bat that ball away. With the judge, Phil Hawk, I'm Joe Parson. We're at uh, Trinity International here in Deerfield, Illinois, in the north northwest suburbs of Chicago. It's halftime, and the Cougars are enjoying a 13-3 hard-fought lead. Let's take a 60-second timeout, and we'll be back with more of our halftime coverage of Cougar Football 2016. This is Cougar Football on the road on Redeemer Radio, 106.3 FM, Northeast Indiana. The Midwest goes by many names. The Heartland, the Corn Belt, the Crossroads of America. But for you, it has another, more important one, home. It stands for the simple things, family dinners, baseball games, and long country drives with the windows down, bonfires, barbecues, and ice cream cones on a Sunday afternoon. And it stands for the values that make all of these things possible. You've built your life around Midwestern values. At Midwest America Federal Credit Union, we have too. That's why we've dedicated ourselves to supporting our members as they work toward their dreams. As your hometown financial partners, we offer practical, dependable service. And since 1936, hardworking families have trusted us to help them with their most important purchases, from mortgages to auto loans and everything in between. Midwest America Federal Credit Union, for your home, for your family. And we are back here, half time as the Cougars open up against the Trinity International Trojans. It is halftime, 13 free our score. As, uh, you know, we talked about the offense, Bill Hopp. We might talk about the defense a little bit. Uh, that last fumble recovery was set up by Lucas Sparks as uh, he was one of the leaders at defensive end for the Cougars a year ago with 10 sacks, led him in that category. Also had three 13 and a half tackles for loss. That was also top 10 numbers in the MSF8. Finished the year with 76 tackles. Now a senior, 6'1 and 239. But uh, he, he's one of the unsung heroes a little bit for St. Francis. Uh, Christian Johnson, I thought, has played well here in the first half. Eric Hemelgam, also now with a chance. A big kid. He's just a sophomore, but six foot five, And he had nine and a half tackles for loss a year ago. Cam Shackelford, also uh, at six foot four, a senior at the other defensive end, starting 250-pounder. But again, you put those that together with those four guys when they have the four down alignment defensively up front and that can be very intimidating for a lot of offenses that we'll see uh that and some great leadership on the defense joe uh pearson parnish uh was one guy that uh coach donnelly singled out as as somebody who has very quickly turned into a leader on this defense now we saw him come in as a freshman last year and just have a huge impact Possibly as much of an impact as I've seen a freshman have uh, for USF in the many years that uh, we've been playing football now in our, our 19th season here. So go back to year one. Yeah, well, going back there, we were all freshmen there, including uh, at least one of the guys on the radio. Then, but uh, so the defense, uh, you know, the good the good news they gave up some first downs in the first half, uh, and and TIU had some success moving the football. But I thought that was because they played well. Uh, but they only scored three points. That's the good news. And that defense, uh, due in large part to some, some good hitting and some good defensive plays, forced a couple of turnovers that USF was able to turn into scores. So, you know, the defense giving up three points in the first half, they've certainly done their job. I think we expected a little bit more out of the offense, however, and uh, maybe that will get turned around in the second half of this football game. 
and we have talked about it so many times, so many years, that early on in the first game or two, usually the defense is ahead of the offense a little bit. And uh, that appears to be the case here today. But uh, back to uh, your point about Trinity International playing so well, and uh, a lot, a lot of quickness, a lot of skill position players. We saw Rockdale Williams tonight a 57-yard punt return touchdown because of a penalty. But they have seen some things they've tried to exploit. And you might talk a little bit about you, you've been in those locker rooms in previous years, and, and when the Cougars are, have been, and I'm going to use the term victimized, but again, they kept them out off the board, no touchdowns by TIU, but still. Trinity International has found some things that they've exploited with crossing patterns. What, what do you expect to have heard by the coaches talking to uh, the, the defense in particular here at halftime? Well, I, I actually would suspect that there's some calmness right there uh, among that coaching staff right now because I think it's a schematic change that they're, they're going to try and implement to try and address those issues. I really didn't see on the part of the defense any lack of effort, which can be uh, – perhaps addressed by an attitude adjustment, which might mean for a little more colorful locker room. Uh, the defense, I thought, played aggressive, and if they uh, made some mistakes in the first half, maybe they were over-aggressive at times, uh, thus causing them to miss some tackles and, and overshoot some gaps. Uh, on the offensive side of the ball, it was just a matter of getting in the sink. And by opening it up with that long pass to, to Seth Coat, I think, for a touchdown before the first half, that's going to make the running game just run a little bit smoother in the second half. So I expect it's a it's a fairly calm locker room, and right now, and USF is is going to turn things around uh, in the second half schematically. Bill, we've got a moment here at halftime, and and I want to pass along some news. Kevin Danley uh, talking to us Thursday about a lot of people don't know that next summer in June it'll be the 20th anniversary celebration of Cougar football. That's hard to believe. It was, uh, what, 1998 when everything got started back then. And uh, young, well, Kevin Downey called them his puppies, came together to uh, put together the first year of Cougar football. But uh, in uh, June, and I think the dates are uh, in mid-June, The tw- I want to say the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. It's going to be a three-day affair. But uh, we invite you to go and online to the uh, Cougar Athletic w- website that would be www.sf.edu slash athletics and look for the link to the 20th year anniversary coming up in june a lot of the players the old-time players from years one two and three and coming back to commemorate uh the cougar success these past all 19 years now and of course going into year 20 next year but uh, it's going to be great to see some of the old faces will barnes i hope to have a chance to see him Jeremy Dutcher, Jeremy Hiblin coming back, and it list just goes on and on. You can tell I'm old because I'm going back to the early years. we It's hard to believe 20 years coming up for this group. And, and that first season really seems uh, not that far away. And that was a season in 1998 where the Cougars won their first game and didn't win another game for quite some time, but did win one. Did win two games that season in total. And but played well, and you could see that this team was developing relatively, really, really pretty quickly. And they did. And by season two, they started that string of uh, consecutive conference championships. So it really was a remarkable uh, buildup of this uh, program. And so many great personalities. And, and being able to see them all next summer is going to be special. And by the way, just a footnote to uh, that uh, special three-day celebration, uh, there will be certain events that are open to the public as well, and that's the reason we wanted to call your attention to it. So, Kruger fans, if you would, uh, just go to that USF website. It's www.sf.edu forward slash athletics. And uh, some of those uh, elements are still being put together, but three days of fun festivities, uh, a lot of uh, the – a lot of uh, the old timers of uh, Cougar football lore from uh, years uh, be- before us uh, coming in and uh, celebrating together. So I'm going to give you a chance to look at the numbers. I tell you what, before we do that, let's step out and uh, we will take another 60 second break and we'll be back with more of our halftime as we wait for the teams to come back here to Leslie Frazier Field. It's the Cougars, though, ranked number four in the preseason poll, and they have a 10-point lead here on homestanding Trinity International 13-3. to 
This is Cougar Football and Redeemer Radio, 106.3 FM, Northeast Indiana. Life is a journey to God. We stumble, we get lost, we lose the light. The best way to navigate the journey is turning to the Catholic faith. Our daily life of spouse, children, neighbors, the stress of work and worry often lead us away from Christ. Whatever your trials, temptations, or tribulations, the Catholic faith is here. You can find the message of hope, trust, and conversion right here on Redeemer Radio. Welcome home to your family of faith. Programming on Redeemer Radio is underwritten in part by Bob Busher Homes. Floor plan customization is what they specialize in. Find floor plans, building sites, and read Bob's story on the web at bobbusherhomes.com. Bob Busher Homes is locally owned with offices in Fort Wayne and Angola. For more information about new home building or remodeling, Bob Busher Homes can be reached at 260-490-3355. Teams beginning to fill them back. Uh, here comes Trinity International back on the field. Now they've got a couple of minutes before they uh, start the second half. They'll enjoy their warm-ups. And let's bring in the judge, Phil Hopp, once again. We'll look at the first half numbers. Thanks a lot, Joe. And uh, some interesting numbers here, to, to say the least. St. Francis uh, on top on the scoreboard at 13-3. to First downs, though, pretty even. Six first downs for St. Francis to seven for TIU. Uh, rushing yardage. St. Francis rushed the ball eight times for 33 yards. TIU rushed the ball 19 times for 50 yards. Passing yardage, uh, a big disparity here at St. Francis, 118 yards passing to just 64 for TIU. But the uh, passing numbers of attempts to completion uh, is a little unusual. Nick Ferrer attempted 22 passes in the first half, completed only eight. TIU, eight of 11. Burmeister, one interception. Total offense in the first half, St. Francis on 30 plays, 151 yards. TIU, 30 plays, 114 yards. Uh, Looking at uh, the turnover situation, that is a key one because TIU turned the ball over two times, once on by an interception and once by a fumble, and St. Francis was able to convert on both of those turnovers. But the time of possession of the first half, St. Francis, 13 minutes and 17 seconds to 16.43 for TIU. Now, we talked about the penalties, Joe, at halftime. Penalties are interesting. St. Francis had some key ones, and they had a lot of them, seven penalties for 38 yards. But TIU, four penalties for a combined 90 yards and we both have kind of a surprised look on our face. We might have to check that one, but that's the number we've been given uh, at the unofficial statistics. Some individual numbers for St. Francis. P.J. Dean leads St. Francis in rushing. Seven carries, 23 yards. Aaron Harris had one carry. That was good for 10 yards. That was also good for a touchdown. Trinity's rushing numbers. Isaac Branch, six carries, for a net of 26 yards. Quentin Reeder also had a pretty good return that was negated. Uh, that would have gone for a touchdown. Four carries, 25 yards. The passing stats lines again for Ferrer. Eight completions on 22 attempts, 118 yards and a touchdown. Uh, he had a long of 40 yards. Burmeister efficient, 11 passes, eight completions. Did have an interception, 64 yards. Did a long of 27 he was sacked one time. Seth Coat, three catches, 80 yards. Keem Kelsaw, one catch, 20 yards. P.J. Dean in a couple of catches, good for seven. Ganger, one catch for eight yards. Receiving for Trinity International. They are led by Hargis, who had three catches, good for 51 yards. USF punted four times in the first half, good for a 38-yard average. Ordway punted just one time for TIU. That was a win-aided 58 yards. So USF capitalized on the two turnovers, the only two turnovers of this game in the first half, a fumble and an interception, scored touchdowns on both occasions, and that's really the difference in this ball game. USF leads at halftime 13-3. to So we get ready now for the second half. It'll be the Cougars with the win behind them, but they're kicking away from left to right. Knicks will tee it up. It was interesting on that stat sheet, Bill, that you had. They had credited 
in the scoring, that 57-yard punt return by Williams. Of course, that was wiped out because of a penalty. Uh, so, but it, it was it was it was nice to see, and I guess they want a remembrance of it. Well, they uh, definitely took it off the scoreboard. <laughs> it wasn't count, but it's still on the stat sheet for some reason. It is opening game. 13-3. Cougars ready to kick away from left to right. Let's see if that's a reader. It is putting reader back uh, one yard deep in the end zone, expecting a long one again. And Nick sails it high, end over end. And from three yards out, here comes reader to the 5-10. 15 up the middle, spun around and dropped and got to the 20, maybe the 21 yard line. And again, he's an electrifying runner and uh, almost a chance to break it for even more yardage. And, uh, USF's key in this second half, and we talked about it. Make some schematic adjustments. Don't lose the aggressiveness. Continue really what you did for most of the first half because defensively they did hold TIU to just three points. So, here come the Trojans now. First snap of the ball game of the second half. Trailing it by 10 as we start things in this second 30 minutes. Burmeister, the 6'1 junior quarterback, back out there. He was 8 of 11 in the first half, 64 yards, one interception, no touchdowns. Looks to hand the ball off. Now throws the ball. He's got to catch Wendell. Wendell short across the line, across the 25. Penalty flag thrown right away. At the snap, Corey Wendell with the catch, but let's see if this one goes against TIU. Referee Jerry Frumpy, they'll pick up the penalty flag now. It was no, it goes against the encroachment against St. Francis, so the Cougars victimize on that first snap. That would be the eighth penalty of the day for the Cougars and is going to set up uh, a second and short, but are we, but, no, we are marching the ball correctly. So that'll, that'll bring up first and five then for TEIU off the encroachment penalty against the USF. That was Nashawn Lewis that, uh, from the outside, apparently jumped the gun, jumped into the neutral zone. So it'll be first down, but first and five now. Early moments of the second half. Hard just flipped wide to the right window. Just caught that ball against Nashawn Lewis. He's wide to the short side to the left. Motion now from right to left. Counter run. No, here's the... They did hand the ball off, and USF in the middle stops that one right at the point of attack, right at the 25. That, of course, will bring up a second down after the short game by TIU. Run up the middle. USF, not many yards have been gained by TIU in this football game in between the tackles. Darrell Thomas down on both knees. One of the starting offensive linemen, a big kid, a junior at 6'2", but 3'12", and they're going to come out to tend to him. That offensive line, a big one for TIU, the average 293 a man, tackle to tackle, Christian Shears at center, Ian Runquist and uh, Thomas down right now, but Kyle Grome and uh, Joshua Cook are the tackles. But uh, we have an injury timeout on the field, and uh, let's take a quick break. 13-3 is our score. 14-11 remaining in the third quarter. And this is Cougar Football and Redeemer Radio, 106.3 FM, Northeast Indiana. You can help support your Catholic parish or school with Notre Dame Federal Credit Union's Elevate program. You'll not only enjoy excellent personal service and save money with your new loan or credit card, you'll also be giving money back to the participating parish or school you care about. Let Notre Dame Federal Credit Union elevate all participating parishes or schools. Elevate can be reached at 844-230-6611 or visit us online at ndelevate.com. Independent from the university. Quick hitting play was a short loss, but now second down and five. There's a catch by Godfrey, but uh, Lee Stewart is right there to wrap him up, so it'll bring a third down and still two for the Trinity International Trojans moving right to left. You know, it's been a good strategy on TIU's part to run those quick uh, passes to try and negate the pressure that USF has been able to bring and the superior athleticism at times, but Burmeister is very accurate in the short passing game. Uh, Hasn't put a lot of points up, but it has kept the chains moving at times. Georgia is trying to reach their own 31 on this snap on third down. Burmeister out of the gun. Looks for the crossing pattern. Throws it up long. That one sails right through the outstretched hands of Corey Wendell. Well, he had a chance that time, and maybe with a catch, could have gone all the way. Now, Wendell uh, 
just couldn't locate the ball, and neither did Lee Stewart, who was defending there for the Cougars. Neither located the ball well. Uh, if they had, it was either going to be a catch or an interception because the ball hung up there for a fair amount of time, and they were both in the vicinity and possibly able to make it play. Sean Boswell is back in punt return, waits inside the Cougar 30-yard line. He had six punt returns a year ago, had a long of 10. This one angled, hits inside the Cougar 40. That one was hit but picked up by Boswell. Now runs across the 30 to about the 32. Did that originally hit a Cougar player? So I, it looked like somebody kicked the football. It came off, a, pounded off of someone's leg, but it should have been either if it came off of a Cougar, it's a live ball, of course, or if it was kicked by a player, it'd be a dead ball. They let them play on anyway, and Boswell carries out the 32. So the Cougars ready to go to work. And, again, that wind kicking up here in Deerfield, Illinois, out of the southwest. They said about 12 miles an hour, but guessing upwards of 15, maybe to 20, maybe a little higher than that. So here come the Cougars now. Their first snap of the second half, and P.J. Dean looking for running room. And follows blockers to the left side, trying to spin for a first down, carried across the 40 up to about the 41, and very, very close to the first down stick. Joe, it's worth noting that all the points of this game have been scored by the team that had the wind at their backs. So that's significant. The Cougars now in the third quarter with the wind at their backs may want to try and take advantage of that. The heck, the Cougars score some points here. Yeah, that's a good that's a good observation. Good point. 12:47 remaining in the third quarter. 13-3 St. Francis. They put all 13 points on the board in the second quarter. Now they do have a first and ten. They've got it at their own 42-yard line, and not much there this time. A running play off tackle to the left side. Get some uh, maybe a yard and a half, a couple of yards up to about the 43 yard line only. Well, right off the bat, you see the Cougars going to uh, two plays between the tackles. And of course, uh, I'm sure the big topic of conversation in the TIU locker room was how they were going to stop the deep game that had been successful for the Cougars uh, on their two touchdown drives. So, Cougars trying to change it up and find some yardage between the tackles. Gain of two brings up second down and eight. GIU two safeties back now. Ferrer wants to throw. Looks, looks, checks off those of the middle. He's got Coat in the open at midfield and then slides down, but he's got the first down. Remember, we're on natural grass, and uh, that can be a little bit of a change. I was talking to the Kroger coaching staff, and during the week they did practice on grass. I thought they might get acclimated to natural grass, but Kevin says, no, you know, we'll, we'll just – it, it, he says it's really easier to go from turf to natural grass than it is to go from natural grass to turf. And that's absolutely a conversation I've been having with other coaches uh, at the high school level, and they've told me the exact same thing. Here we go. Here's the bubble screen. Left side, Boswell's got it, needs a block, got it, cut it to 40, 35, and then cartwheels, does a somersault out of bounds, jumps to his feet, and indicates first and ten. Boswell coming out of the, the slot at the wingback position uh, looked really impressive to me uh, in the scrimmage last week we watched. At that time, uh, he, he was very impressive. That's his first catch of the day and a good run after the catch by Boswell also. Nate Carson checks into the ball game, and he is sent to the short side, too wide to the short to the left, too wide to the right. And Ferrer barks out the signals. Rush is coming. Throws the ball, and that one is caught. And Carson steals it away inside the 20 and down close to the 18-yard line. Carson had to reach out and take that away from a TIU defender. It's 291, and uh, we do have a player down. Uh, it's one of the offensive linemen for you. Uh, Bruner. Bruner. Uh, he's up, though. He looks like he's going to be okay. I got a little concerned there. I was going to talk about the great play made by Carson, who after snatching the ball, kind of like a Spider-Man move out of the air, uh, kind of stuck that ball in the defender's chest, pulled it out, and went the other direction, actually kind of used the ball like a stiff arm to clear himself a pass so he could get some yards after the catch. You know, at Delane coming up with some nicknames. Remember Night Train Lane a few years ago? Well, how about Nate Kit Carson? Does that ring for you? Uh Let's talk about that. First and ten, and there's a whistle, and once again, of course, everybody that put a flag throws one. That one goes against Jalen Gamble, 262-pound junior for St. Francis. They start in the second half. 
That starting lineup, Brian Gigner at center, Zach Minardo and Jason Gamble, Jalen Gamble, I should say, at guards. Keegan Bruner was injured a little bit ago and a play earlier, Alex Woods at left tackle. But now the penalty, in, instead of first and 10, it becomes first and 15 with the ball moved back to the 24-yard line. 10-28 remaining in the third quarter. Barrer splits two wide to the right side and looks to run the ball, and there is Justin Green, I think, in, in there again. Let's see if that is Justin Green with a straight-ahead carry. No, no, check it. It's Aaron Harris, 37 rather than 17. And the power runner, you know, you look at P.J. Dean and you look at Justin Green, they give you that uh, that elusive shiftiness, uh, the speed backs, and then Aaron Harris, he's the power back and uh, straight-ahead, letting good kind of carry. Kind of the bowling ball style player, 5'9", 205, 209 out of Whiteland High School. And uh, you know, when he gets ahead of steam going, he is very quick and he runs up between the tackles. Now Green does come in on second down and 10. Ferreira throws over the middle. That one knocked away. That was not on target. And a good play defensively that time by Brad Mowbray came up and knocked it away. And it will be third down and 10. Code and Kelsaw both a little too close to where the football was delivered. I don't know if that was a uh, uh, miscalculation in the way those routes were run, but you don't want to have to put them that close, and I think that caused some confusion and inability to complete that pass. Code stays in. He said wide to the left on third and 10. Ball is spotted at the TIU 19 yard line. Cougars trying to make a play now here to extend their 10 point lead. Ferrer takes the snap. Looks for Cote. He's wide open down the left side, and he throws to the right. He's got a catch. Uh, that's carried out of bounds, but uh, it'll be good game. Seth Cote, nobody near him in the left corner of the end zone, near the 10 yards. Unfortunately for uh, Ferrer, he was pushed and pressured away from where Cote was down the field, so he wasn't able to look in that direction. He found a receiver on the near side of the field. Uh, and completed that pass to uh, Trayvon Carr, but it was only good for three yards, or really two yards, and so that brings up fourth and long, and the Cougars hoping to keep this uh, incursion into the red zone going. Not seeing Knicks come on for the field goal attempt. We will see Aaron Harris come back in. It's fourth down and eight. Cougars would need to reach the 10-yard line to come up with a new set of downs. Here's a throw of the middle, and that ball is incomplete in and out of the hand. Hakeem Kosov, the fence for the play, knocked away, and it was Darwin Stone, and it was down, stopped by T.A.U., and they'll take over the football now with 9.34 remaining here in the third quarter. For the Trojans, it'll be their first offensive possession. Well, and, and for, for the Cougars, the fence now, they just gotta continue doing what they've been doing, Joe. They want to give it up three points to this point of the game. They performed well in the first drive of the, of the second half and defensively the Cougars are fine. Unfortunately, the offense misfired on three straight downs and when they had got to the red zone. Here's Burmeister now looking to hand the ball off. They want to cut back to the right side and there is absolutely nothing there as USF uh, stuffs that uh, with some authority. Checking some of the numbers. We're getting some of the new numbers in there for St. Francis right now and uh, Checking that, uh, that was Drake DeMute that was in there making that play. That's going to bring up second and long, second and about 12 off the two-yard loss, and the Cougar defense continues to have played well really ever since about the start of the second quarter, and they've given up very little. Burmeister out of the shotgun formation, drops the throw again, screens the ball near side. There's a run across the 20-yard line. And that was uh, Reader. Reader brings it up to the 25 to the 26, short of the first down by about three yards. But a very nifty third down call coming up for the Trojans. So St. Francis trying to stop it and take over the football. They would get very good field position. Once again, just a little quick pass uh, by Burmeister uh, into the flat on the near side of the field. Can you get some interference out there in front of the receiver? And it goes for. Positive yardage, bringing a third and short. Trips to the right side, including Hargis, as Burmeister has the ball, looks to hand it off, and here he does hand it off. Nothing there. Got only for the 25-yard line. And, boy, Cougars 
gang tackling. Person Harnish was there, and he had a lot of help. Planted into the turf. That's you know, you can do that on a grass field. You can plant them, and he did. Pearson Harness just picked the receiver, the running back up, moving back five yards, he planted him back at the 25 yard. So Ardway comes on to run the ball away. He waits back at the 11 yard line, needs a good snap here. Boswell in punt return at the Cougar 40. Rush is coming, left footed kick off the side of the foot near side. Takes a bit of a bounce, angling towards the near sideline. Comes down to a rest at the USF 41-yard line. So very good field position for Nick Pereira. They were denied last possession getting into the end zone. And they'll take over the football again. 7.26 remaining in this third quarter. Still no change in our score. It was 13-3 at halftime. It's 13-3 right now. Really good news, I think, is the defense continues to play well. They've done well on both their series uh, in the second half for the Cougars. And the offense moved the ball on the last drive. It's just that when they got down to the red zone, they just fired on two straight plays, got themselves into a bind on four down, and, and had a drop or a pass that could have been a touchdown pass. Here so often, you've got to finish, and golly, there again, right at the snap of the ball. And Kevin Donnelly is going to be just simply beside himself. Yet another procedure call. This one against Brian Gagner, and he's the center. I was going to say that that might turn his hair white. <laughs> but if that doesn't work for Kevin Donnelly. But I think that's the tenth penalty on the Cougars today. Uh, a big number. Again, we repeat, first game, sometimes that happens. You hope that's not a trend for the rest of the season. And once again, first and 10 becomes first and 15 with the ball moved back just outside the USF 35-yard line. Nate Carson in, he made a big catch earlier that gave him a chance to get points on the board. They come up and press coverage on the outside by TIU. Here's the blitz coming. Ferrer gets rid of it. And here's a block of C.J. Dean. Cuts to the outside. The midfield leaps over a wooden tackler and gets into Trojan territory. Depends where he stepped out of bounds. Looks right around the 40 yard line of the Trojans. What a run, though, after the catch by T.J. Dean. Well, with pressure coming, that's the perfect call. Cougars found themselves with the perfect call in response to that big blitz by TIU. They went to the screen, and P.J. Dean had a nice run after the catch, leaping over a defendant. Good for a first down. Boswell comes in, and he's in the slot band to the left side. That's the wide side of the field. And Ferrer looking to throw again. Checks off, pulls it down, throws the left side. Got a man out there. There's a catch. Curses inside the 10 to the 5. Brought down from behind. Touchdown saving tackle, but it'll be first and goal for St. Francis at the Trojan five yard line. Okay, I'll go with a kick, Carson, on the far side of the field there, Joe. Uh, in a, in a hit and go pattern. And so the play took a while to develop, but Burr had him all day, and by the time the hit and go was, was developed, uh, Carson found himself with a first down lead on the defender and almost got the ball in the end zone. So. You do know that it's only the 50 and 60 year olds that are going to understand what Kit Carson means. I barely know, Joe. I'm in that category. Here would come the Cougars now on knocking on the door, trying to extend the lead. They'll run the ball off tackle right side and into the end zone is PJ Dean for a touchdown. Officially a touchdown, touchdown run of six Francis. yards. PJ Dean at the 623 mark. So the Cougars, who failed to score in the first quarter, 13 in the second quarter, and now extend their lead out 19-3 here in quarter three action. Knicks will come on. One out of two today, an extra point. Missed his second attempt. But P.J. Dean to the house with a six-yard touchdown run after uh, running for six touchdowns a season ago. Knicks waiting for the chance to convert. Boswell is the holder. Waiting for the snap, Boswell, and the kick, right-footed kick is on the way. This time it is good. So, stoppage here at Leslie Frazier Field, 20-3, to as the Cougars extend their lead out to 17, and we'll be back to Deerfield, Illinois, after a timeout. Cougar football on the road on Regional Radio, 106.3 FM, Northeast Indiana. 
Spherion Staffing, locally owned by the Pentenberg family, excels in finding the best candidates for industrial, clerical, customer service, non-clinical health care, IT, and professional direct hire placements. Spherion clients are accustomed to getting the right employees at the right time, every time. Spherion Staffing supports the proud excellence of the Dwinger Saints and the Lures Knights, both on the field and in the classroom. Whether you are seeking your next career move or searching for great employees, call us at 260-496-9900 or visit us on the web at spherion.com slash ftwayne. Cougars extending that lead out to a 17-point advantage now, and Reader's back at, at the goal line, and uh, he's wanting another chance again. He uh, he doesn't care how deep he is in the end zone. He's bringing it out today, Phil. Three plays, 59 yards on the Cougar drive. It took one minute and three seconds, capped off by the five-yard touchdown run by P.J. Dean. A couple of nice catches by Tim Carson on top of the drive. And USF has scored 20 straight points. Nick's approaching the ball. Right foot kick drives it high into over in. The three yards deep, and here comes Reader again. Out of the end zone to the 10 to the 15. Touch to his left. Wrapped up. He won't reach the 20. That time, they got to him, and there's a Cougar down in the middle of the field, but back on his feet, and uh, looks like he's okay. So it'll be TIU now back on offense, but now on the short end, by 17 points here at home. Getting you credit to Clinton, I guess. Uh, he took that ball five, six yards deep into the end zone and decided to bring it out. He's he's clearly a very fast, quick runner with some pretty good moves. At that time, USF was up to the task and really blew him up inside the 20-yard line. Still over six minutes time remaining in this third quarter. Looking at uh, TIU, They'll be back here at Leslie Frazier Field next Saturday. They'll host with Wisconsin Lutheran. Then five straight ball games on the road. Crossing pattern intended for Godfrey. Incomplete. Cougars had the coverage there that time. And incomplete step for step. With them uh, that time was Rocky James. There's a name that uh, Kevin Daly asked uh, among the newcomers who was caught to right. You mentioned Rocky James. Yeah, really high praise also. But not just from Kevin Daly, but from... Uh, co-offensive coordinator Pat Donnelly talked about him being uh, potentially one of the best uh, freshman athletes that they've brought in at the wide receiver, receiver position in years. So really high hopes for that young man from Senior Ohio. And right now playing some defense. Here's a quick throw and into the slot. They've got a catch. It'll be a game across the 25 to the 26. It'll bring a third down and about a long three. We were talking earlier about a great environment for families. They've got picnic tables out to our extreme south, across the way. They've got the, the picnic blankets out, the families sitting out there enjoying some snacks. I'd like to join them. It's, it's really a nice setting here on a pretty little campus right off the interstate. Uh, but uh, despite the interstate just being a few hundred yards away, it's, it's really beautiful with the uh, pond and the beautiful trees and a nice, uh, nice August day. Here's a quick out pass. That's incomplete. Good play. Lee Stewart ninth in there in front of Marcus. They had a little clear out pattern run on the near sideline, but Stewart made the play. It'll be fourth down, and we'll see the punt team come in for TIU. Terrific defensive play by Stewart to, to get around without making contact, to get that arm around front to bat the football away. That's just a textbook uh, play. Uh, when you're in press coverage, man-to-man coverage on how you got to play that low one to the inside of the receiver. Hard way to kick the ball away. Left-footed kick. Nice drives. Boswell back inside the 30 to the 25. Now returns to the 30, 35, 40. It strips off, steps off a tackle, 50, 45, 40. Down the left sideline and tries to leap over a would-be tackle. There is a penalty flag at the TIU 40. But what a return that time by Sean Boswell. Just a missed tackle away maybe from going the distance. Well, I think it's going to come back at least part of the way with that flag. is up near the same or the TIU 40, so the penalty will probably be parked off from there. That's exactly correct. You may have heard the officials report there. Ten yards on the spot as well. So USF will still start with really great field position right at midfield. Nick Ferreira will bring the offensive unit back out. Of course, they're still uh, remembering their latest score on a touchdown run. Six yards by P.J. Dean. 
It's got them now this 20 to three lead, and now they're at midfield to start this possession with still 5:17 on the clock. Pereira in the first half, eight of 22 through the air, 118 yards, one touchdown. That's on the 40-yard touchdown toss to Seth Coach. Two wide to the right. A little spin play by Pereira. Steps up in the pocket, throws to the middle. He's got a catch and pushed forward, losing his helmet. The game will be inside the 35 down to the 33-yard line. And, well, that's no place to lose a helmet. You know, Boswell made the great catch over the middle, and he's not a man of big stature at 5'9", 185, but he makes the tough catch and then is bracketed by two defenders who, who hit him so hard that the helmet just popped off and then he's going down to the field and you really feel worried for his welfare, but he's okay. He has to set out a play, and Cougar's in business with the first down. Boswell was like the human pinball after he took that hit, but they propelled him further downfield. First and ten. With the ball now at the 33-yard line. Pereira looks to hand it off. Here's P.J. Dean trying to sweep to the outside. Is going to get back only maybe to the line of scrimmage. That one came up on the right side and defended very well by T.I.U. So it'll bring up second down and still very long. Ortiz with the tackle. That first half, those two linebackers for T.I.U. combined for six and Five tackles, so 11 tackles by them in the first half. They continue their dominance. Last year, they combined for 97 on the season. And Schusler, who led all the mid-states, uh, just exceptionally quick. That was actually a loss of one. Second 11. Ferrer wants to throw. Looks right. He's got a catch. Here's a, a good run. That's Nicodemus. Nicodemus, the tight end, breaks it inside the 25 and shedded tacklers as he will pick up the first down for St. Francis. And Nicodemus, a very happy player right now because he, he comes off the injury of a year ago and has a nice positive play. Looked really strong after the catch on that play, Joe. I thought the way he, he ran, got his uh, balance upright, headed up field, and stiff-armed a defender and added some nice yards after the catch. Rocky James in. He's wide to the right, to the short side. First and 10 at the 21 now. And movement once again by St. Francis. That will cost them five more. That's Connor Holcomb, Jr., and uh, getting some snaps here on the offensive line. And it's kind of contagious. It doesn't matter whether it's the starters or the, the second teamers. Uh, the offensive line has just had some problems with the snap count. Joe, the way this game has been going so far, I'd say USF has got them right where they want them because they've had so many of these penalties in the last two quarters, but they have been successful at sustaining drives the last few times. Here's Pereira, takes the handoff, being pressured, throws. He's got a man out there. That's Kelso. Took it away. He's got a touchdown. Akeem Kelso backpedaling into the end zone. It will be a 26-yard touchdown toss. Now we have a late penalty. But I think the touchdown is going to stand. This is going to be a dead ball foul, I believe. Yeah, I think the touchdown will stand. Something occurred up near the 20-yard line. Joe, it looked like after the play, but it's not going to negate a great effort by Ferrer to extend the play and to find Kelso in the corner of the end zone. Kelso turned his body around completely. So it will be assessed on the kickoff against USF, but a touchdown nonetheless. And Kelso with the 26-yard touchdown pass made a great catch in the end zone. That young man in his sixth year now at USF is definitely back, and he's going to have be dangerous, and he's going to have an impact on the Cougars this year. He has got to be feeling so many emotions, you know, after all the injury problems and to come into the season opener healthy and to catch a touchdown has got to be just so great for him. So that'll move it out to 26-3 to three now, pending the extra point attempt by Ryan Nix. Boswell, the holder, right-footed kick. End over end is on its way, and it is good. So 27-3, to three, our count, as the Cougars put two touchdowns on the board here in the second half to extend their lead, and we'll be back with a timeout here in Deerfield, Illinois. This is Cougar Football on Receiver Radio, 106.3 FM, Northeast Indiana. Hello, I'm Tom Steele with Tom Steele Tire and Auto Repair. 
a family-owned business for over 35 years. We carry all major brands of new tires, as well as a large selection of quality used tires to save you money. We do all types of auto repairs, be it brakes, alignment, or just fix your air conditioning. Tom Steel Tire, North Clinton or Illinois Road. Give us a try. You'll be glad you did. Cougars with the penalty now. That'll back them up on the kickoff. 337 remaining still in this third quarter. So instead of uh, that'll move the Knicks back to kick it off at the 20-yard line. I'll tell you what, the TIU coaches down below us, very animated right now and not happy with the, what they've seen here in the third quarter as St. Francis has put two touchdowns on the board, Phil. Yeah, new defensive coordinator this year, showing a little bit of fire, no question about it, with his defenders not happy that uh, USF has really had their way in the second half of this football game offensively. Now, Reeder sets up at his 15, and watch him now. He has uh, shown some ability here. Here comes Nix, and he does try to kick it end over end deep. Reeder backs up. He's got it at the 12. Works to the 20, 25. Looking to cut to the right side, and now chopped down at the 32. And uh, that is where Trinity International now is still 331 left in this third quarter. They'll go to work. They'll bring the offensive unit back on the field. You really got to love the effort of that Quentin Reader, though, on his return. A 5'7", 160-pound freshman out of South Carolina, and he has looked fearless out there today on these returns. Although U.S. up on that play crowded him well, it, it didn't. He, he wasn't shy about the contact that he received in that uh, center of that Cougar defense. Phil, you mentioned he's from South Carolina. Yeah, it's 80-some degrees out here today in August. I want to talk to him in November, late October, when it's about, what, 20-some. We'll see how, how excited it is. Here we go, though. Hargis in motion as Reader does uh, take the sweep and angles run. Crosses the 35 and brought it up to the 37-yard line. So a good run by the young freshman. He will pick up uh, about five yards. Quentin Reader. That will take the clock down. It may run inside of three minutes before the snap of the football by the Trojans. Cougars on the road. They stay on the road in uh, the state of Illinois next uh, Saturday night at night game down at Bourbon A against Olivet Nazarene. That will be a 7 o'clock Fort Wayne kickoff time. We'll be on the air on Redeemer Radio at about 645. Harches splits wide to the right. Wendell comes out. Joined by Raphael Williams here to the near side. And Burmeister looking quick throw to the right side. That's a catch short of the first down. And what a driving tackle. I think that was Darrell Holman who just put his shoulder. No, that's not Holman. Get the number in a moment. But uh, just a big stick defensively. I think I got Shannon Swain, the 185 pound cornerback out of Anderson. Uh, he was he planted the defender on that or the offensive player on that play. So it'll bring up third down and close to three yards. Trojans will have the ball at their own 40-yard line, trying to get up a, across the 42. So big call coming up for both teams right now. Still 2:04 remaining, and again they want to run the ball, and they're not going to get there. They get back to the line of scrimmage, and boy. They're going to get a good spot of the ball across the 40-yard line, but that'll still be about a yard, yard and a half short. And now fourth down, and your Kirk Weirich at this point with a minute 48 remaining in the quarter. Do you go for it, Phil? Well, it's a question of whether you feel like you're still in this football game uh, or if you feel you got to take a big risk. And it looks like he's going to leave his offense on the field, Joe, and he's going to roll the dice a little bit here on fourth and short. Could be a situation where they try and pull the Cougars off as opposed to running a play, uh, but he's going to give up great field position if he cannot convert. 27 to 3, a lead of 24 for fourth ranked St. Francis. It'll be fourth down and yard, and now they want to talk about it. So there's a stoppage down below. Still 117 on the clock. And with our score here in the third quarter, 27 to 3, St. Francis. We will step out. This is Cougar Football and Redeemer Radio, 106.3 FM, Northeast Indiana. 
opens the plan to the next Saturday. So what you doing there, Picasso? I am creating a masterpiece for the prayer card contest for this fall share I am so excited. I hope they like it. Could you hand me that crayon? <laughs> um, Jen, now I may be one crayon short of a full box, but I don't think you can enter the contest. It's for kids. Kids? Kids only. So the Sharing is Mercy prayer card contest is only for kids? Kids from 2nd to 12th grade from around the diocese are invited to design this fall's prayer card showing how we can show mercy to others. Mom and Dad can download the entry form from the Redeemer Radio website. Make sure you stay inside the lines. Remember to drop off your entry at either Fort Wayne or South Bend Redeemer Radio studios between now and August 29th. Voting begins in September. So start thinking about how we show mercy to others. Find the form on our website and get to scribbling. And remember, your prayer card design has to be in by August 29th. Thank you. Fourth and one, here we go. Burmeister under pressure completes the pass and Burgess has got the first down to be works his way out to his own 45-yard line. Cougars jumped offside. I didn't see a penalty flag go through. Well, I think they're going to say that the Cougars got back in time, Joe, so they did throw the flag, and it certainly worked in Trinity's advantage because they had a good call on with the screen pass, middle screen. Cougars missed the first uh, tackle, and therefore it went for the first down. St. France has done a good, good job. They've kept TIU off the scoreboard as far as touchdowns. Now we're down to one minute time remaining this third quarter, so it will be Trinity International now working against the wind for the remainder of this quarter, but then they'll have the wind behind them for the entire fourth quarter, but trailing it by 24. Motion gone free from right to left, and they'll look back. Here's a late pitch. It comes to Williams. Williams in the clear. He's got behind the defense. He's got the 35. Arnie catches up to him and drops him. That might have been a touchdown saving tackle inside the Cougar 30, down to about the 27. And there's Raphael Williams picking him up, laying him down. Raphael Williams showed a great first speed on the read option to the far side of the field. A nice job by Burmeister of making the correct call to pitch the ball right at the last second. And uh, Williams made one defender miss, and he was off to the races. We have a timeout called by St. Francis. Let's keep things right here. We're still 30 seconds to go in the quarter. So the Cougars trying to settle down their defense here and keep the Trojans. Remember, they're working against the wind, but uh, they've uh, had a good mix of run and pass in this uh, most recent offensive series, and they're knocking on the door now with a first and 10 at the USF 26. Well, the only hope really for Trinity to get back into this football game after USF had scored 27 unanswered points is to score quickly and score on this drive right here. If they can get it within 17 going into the fourth quarter, then you're you know less than three scores, and that's doable. It's still a tall order but they have got to score points now, and they know it, and that's why they went for it on fourth down, and that was successful. And now they've really got something going with the big gainer off the read option on the last play. You know, you look at Trinity International and uh, St. Francis, their defensive front line, really have not gotten that uh, much today against uh, back there to put pressure on Burmeister. This was an offensive line a year ago that gave up 26 sacks. But St. Francis has done an excellent job of basically stopping the attack in the middle between the tackles uh, at the point of attack. First and 10, though. Here come the Trojans. Two protectors back, and they look an option read. There's Burmeister, but then they drag him down at the 25. So he'll gain about a yard, maybe a yard and a half, and that is it. And I would guess that'll be the final play of this third quarter. We're down to 16 seconds. And Trinity International just now getting back to huddle up. And they do not look like they're down to six. Burmeister still getting the play wagged in, and they're not going to get a play off here. So that will be the last play of this third quarter. We go to quarter four in 2016, the premiere of Cougar football 2016. The tr- it's the Cougars have got the lead headed to the fourth quarter, 27 3. This is Cougar football on the road on Redeemer Radio 106.3 FM, Northeast Indiana, back in 60 seconds. Meet the Murphys and the Taylors. These neighbors both refinance their homes to take advantage of a better interest rate and to lower their monthly payments. 
the Murphys used a big bank and spent their vacation money to pay $2,300 in closing costs. Meanwhile, the Taylors paid only $199 by choosing Midwest America's special 10-year refinance program and didn't need to use their vacation money. Looks like this year, the Murphys will be getting the Taylors mail while they're out of town. Find out about Midwest America's 10 and Done program, where you can own your home in just 10 years. Visit us online at midwestamerica.org for more details on this and other refinance options and first mortgages. You can also call or stop by to speak with a mortgage specialist at one of our branches located in Fort Wayne, New Haven, Columbia City, Decatur, and Huntington. Midwest America, all together, better. An equal housing lender. With the Judge Phil Hawk, I'm Joe Parson. Welcome back to Deerfield, Illinois. Season opener for St. Francis. And they've got the lead 27-3, but it's TIU with the ball second down and nine, and they've got it at the Cougar 25-yard line. Here's Burmeister, short drop, look, pulls it down. Now hit from behind, got rid of the ball, and they're going to rule that an incomplete pass. He was in the grass, Bill, but uh, they just rule it incomplete pass, and St. Francis dodged the bullet similar in the first half, and maybe that's just a good uh, make good. I, I suppose you could call it that. It was hard to imagine who he was trying to throw the ball to or if he was outside the pocket. Maybe that's what the call was. Burmeister looked like he was going to throw the ball pulled the ball down, and by that time, the the Cougar rush had definitely caught up with him, and he was being planted in the turf, and as he was going down, he threw the football down at the ground, called an incomplete pass. Ball squarely at the St. Francis 25-yard line, third and nine. Obviously, TIU down 24 points there in four-down yardage area. Motion again, Raphael Williams. Here's Burmeister, throws to the corner. He's got a man out there, but he missed. Hargis, he was running the deep post. And he has seen between Holman and another defender, but that pass that overshot Hargis, and it'll bring up fourth down. And it may come at a really good time. Burmeister is very woozy as he gets up after being planted on the turf. And uh, he's kind of, with assistance, walking off the field right now. So he wasn't really ready to play anymore. And we're going to see a field goal attempt, our second one of the day, for TIU. This will be 42 yards. They're short of man. Jeremiah Carter, by the way, was 11 of 15 last year, long of 48 yards. This one will be from 42 yards out from the right hash mark. He's got the distance. Does he have the angle? And it is good. So a pair of field goals, this one from 42 yards out. That'll make it 27 to 6. So they get points on the board. T.I. Two today on a pair of field goals by Jeremiah Carter. And 27 is our score. And we'll take a quick timeout. We'll be back. This is Cougar Football and Redeemer Radio, 106.3 FM, Northeast Indiana. Life is a journey to God. We stumble, we get lost, we lose the light. The best way to navigate the journey is turning to the Catholic faith. Our daily life of spouse, children, neighbors, the stress of work and worry often lead us away from Christ. Whatever your trials, temptations, or tribulations, the Catholic faith is here. You can find the message of hope, trust, and conversion right here on Redeemer Radio. Welcome home to your family of faith. Still a lot of time remaining in this ball game. 14.45 on the clock here in the fourth quarter. You kind of wonder maybe Phil Hauck if uh, TIU now down, well, they've got it within three touchdowns, 21-point deficit. But might he be tempted to go onside here? Well, uh, I, I think that's a really good uh, suggested show. And it just depends on whether you want to go for it or if you want to just give great field position to USF. I think they're going to kick it deep, though. They do. A booming kick that uh, is across the end line. So a lot of leg by the Carter uh, kicker that time, and uh, St. Francis will go to work first and 10 at their own 25-yard line, first and 10. Now working against the win, and we'll see if that changes maybe the complexion of the offensive calls by the uh, Cougar coaches here, trying to maybe a little bit sit on that 21-point lead against the win. USF only scored their points when the win was at their back. <laughs> Let's remember that. Uh, so we'll see if the USF offensive prowess, which actually looked really, really good in the third quarter, continues. Monte McDowell comes in. He's actually tight to the left side. 
They've got tandem receivers out here. They haven't seen that look uh, before. Here's now a motion, but a counter run. Justin Green. Green works to the right side, trying to turn the corner and run out of bounds up around the 30-yard line. He'll be close to a five-yard pickup. I think that's – is that Green's first carry of the day, Joe? No, he's had two carries. Uh, but you can see that that young man has has a nice burst of speed and a very graceful runner as well. You have to like his kind of gliding running style. So – Lots of different styles the Cougars have in that backfield, but a lot of good backs. I was kidding, Kevin Downey. I said uh, Green just got academically cleared on Thursday. I said, is he politicking you to start? And he said, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but he has uh, seen some action today. Here's Ferrer scrambling, dumps the ball off. Nice touch pass, Monty McDowell midfield. 45 trying to hold onto the ball, but he stepped out of bounds somewhere around the 49-yard line. And it'll be a St. Francis First down, but a nice touch job that time by on the prayer, lofting that ball and put it exactly into the arms of Monte McDowell. It almost seems that when Frere is under a little bit of pressure, he delivers a more accurate pass at times, uh, especially on those plays that break a little bit like that last one did. He found McDowell right in a little seam, and it was only after he had been flushed from the pocket. Rocky James splits wide to the right side now. And the Cougars with one back. And here's Ferrer wanting to throw once again. Throws the home run ball up for right side, but that one's going to sail out of bounds. Looking on the fly pattern for Rocky James. But step for step with him, pretty good defense. And the ball thrown to the outside. You like that Ferrer where only James was going to have a shot at catching that ball. Another foul, personal foul against St. Francis. That's a big one on Keegan Bruner. And that'll back them up 15 yards. Show these personal fouls now really start to add up against St. Francis. And, uh, you know, you kind of wonder what's going on down there right now uh, because it's going against St. Francis, and they're getting called uh, dead ball fouls after the, after the play's over. There's some talking. There's some extracurriculars going on. Penalty will move USF back inside their 40 to the 36-yard line. It is going to be second down and very long. The blitz is coming. They'll screen the ball. Here's Green. Green with a block in front. 40, 45, 50, 45, 40. Down the right sidelines and cartwheels against the hit out of bounds inside the 35-yard line. And Justin Green doesn't look like he's missed a beat. He is so graceful. And I said that the last time. Just a minute ago. But you look at his stride is big. And he eats up lots of yardage with every step. Uh, a great looking runner. I, I guess, you know, having been away from Cougar football a lot for the last four years, I uh, haven't seen him run very much, but he's an impressive uh, player. Cougars get all that yardage back. Now they've got a first down at the 34 yard line. They'll work from the right side hash mark as Ferrer looks to hand the ball off. Green again looks for running room and just plows straight ahead, dives inside the 30, maybe got close to the 29 yard line. And that'll be a gain of about six yards by Justin Green, who led the Cougars with 1,062 yards on 155 carries. The 1,062 yards, second best in the MSFA, led the Cougars with 10 touchdowns, and that also tied for second best in the MSFA. So it'll be second down and five. James in there. They're up on press coverage on him defensively on the far side. Motion. Right to left by Boswell. Here's Green again, and upended dives down close to the 25. They're going to say the knee hit back outside the 25, and we've got a Cougar down. That's Connor Holcomb, who is sitting on the turf and takes his helmet off and kind of rolls over on his side. And at this point of the day, I, you hope that's a cramp, Joe, and it might be uh, as opposed to a, to a more serious injury. Uh, we shall see, though. But uh, the Cougar offense moving right now, and uh, the sun's out. That's a good omen, I would hope. At 12:21 remaining in this ball game, so we have an injury timeout. Let's keep things right here. I want to remind everybody about that three days in June coming up. A lot of festivities. Three days special, a celebration of 20 years of Cougar football. Of course, uh, 19 season 19 starting this year, but in mid June, I believe it's the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. But go to the USF website at www.sf.edu forward slash athletics. Kevin Donnelly talking about three great days of a lot of the old timers coming back, 
from the 1998 season and since then, but to also saw a lot of different special events, and a lot of those are going to be open to the public as uh, the plans develop. You can keep up to date and uh, kind of keep that period open in uh, mid to late June, uh, three days of celebration of what will be year 20 of Cougar football. Third down and short, third and a couple. Now split backs in the backfield, first time on the goal line offense that we've seen today for USF. They'll run the ball to Green. Green cuts it up inside the 20 to the 15. Hit from the backside, and, but not before he's got a first down. And you always so rest, worry rest, about that, that hit coming, Bill, from the blind side. But uh, Green jumps back up to his feet and it looks like he's okay. Exception of the first drive, Joe, of the second half, USF has scored touchdowns on three straight drives. This would, they can finish this one. That would be their fourth straight touchdown, which would make, make them four for five in the second half. Team Kelsaw checks in. He's up on the wing to the right side. And it'll be first and ten now. Kelsaw in motion, but here's a spin move to the right by Pereira, looking for time, running out of time, dumps the ball and threw it away. He actually had a receiver open for a moment, but he was scrambling for his life, and uh, that'll stop the clock with 11.24 to play. Joe, that was Will Crisman that broke open, the 6'6", 207-pound freshman out of DeKalb High School. He did break open, but Pereira was too close to the sideline and just didn't have time to get the ball up to him at the goal line. Well, there's going to be a personal foul. This one goes against Trinity International. That was a hit out of bounds. It'll be half the distance to the goal. And uh, maybe noteworthy, Phil, the Cougars are going against the wind. There's not much wind, though, right now. And uh, that's certainly what we saw in the first three quarters. And getting very warm, by the way, with the sun out here in the top of the press box. It's definitely been a Midwest kind of day, Joe, because we've seen all sorts of weather. I went through torrential rain on the way over here this this morning. We saw we saw clouds, we saw sprinkles, um, we've seen gusty wind, and now it's just sultry. Aaron Harris is the running back, flanked a little bit behind to the left. There's motion by Kelsa. Harris gets the ball, tries to test the right side, runs into a walk of five, but then breaks it and trots into the end zone. That's so officially a touchdown run of Eight yards by Aaron Harris, and that is his second touchdown run of the day. And suddenly it's a 33-6 lead by St. Francis. And ironically, Phil, back in 2010 when the Cougars were last here on this field, they won this ball game against TIU. Guess what the score was? 33-6. to six. I was going to ask you to recall what the score was. I thought we were very, very close to what that same score was that day. And I remember that day actually pretty well. So uh, USF uh, getting a tough test here today, but they're firing all cylinders right now. Knicks hits the uh, extra point chip shot. So that will make it 34 to 6. And still 10.50 remaining in this ball game. And we will take a timeout. This is Cougar Football on the Road on Redeemer Radio, 106.3 FM, Northeast Indiana. A clean office space. Okay, that's an easy choice, and choosing the right company to clean your business is easy, too. Siokas Professional Cleaning is the choice of a lot of Fort Wayne companies because of the 100% satisfaction guarantee. Siokas does it with built-in check systems to make sure your business is cleaned beyond your expectations every time. First impressions are critical, so make sure yours is always the best with professional cleaning from Siokas. The best people, the best service. 483-2112 or online at siokas.com. Cougars stay on the road next Saturday here in Illinois. They travel south of here, and they'll be down in Bourbonnet, Illinois, for a night of fair with the Olivet Nazarene Tigers. It'll be a 7 o'clock program kickoff time and a pregame at 6.45 on Redeemer Radio. Next Saturday night, under the lights. That game will not be played, by the way, at Olivet Nazarene. They had their press box. It was destroyed by a storm uh, several weeks ago, so they moved next Saturday's game to a high school field. So first time we've been there in a while as well. So they didn't have a press box there while the Bears trained there. Uh, I heard about that storm. It must have been really something. Uh, yeah, the Bears don't train there on that field. They've got to use all their practice uh, facilities, so... 
here inside the five. Here's a return. There's Reader up the middle. He's behind the defense again. One man to beat at the 50 to the 45. And finally brought down. And this kid is something else. A freshman. And he really enjoys the game. Great field position. Great Reader will give us PIU great field position and a chance to score here in the fourth. You know, USF did what you normally have to do on, on kick coverage, and that's contain uh, at the margins, just push the play to the middle. But Reader is so quick and so adept at finding a seam, he was able to exploit a tiny little space and, like a rocket ship, uh, advance the ball 55 yards up the field. You know, ironically, Phil, he doesn't have a lot of zigs and zags. He just flat out quick up the middle. Here's a screen coming near side. Hard just strips a tackle and uh, – Struggles down to the 41-yard line. Cougars had a chance to actually tackle him for loss, but he was able to that shed that. Big, 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 big. And Hargis will get a gain, net gain of about three yards to the Cougar 41. Fock, uh, still a lot of time, under 10 and a half minutes remaining in this ball game, and it's St. Francis on top here by 28 big ones. Well, despite uh, what we consider to be a pretty slow start by the Cougar offense in this game, Ever since the second quarter, Joe, they've had their offensive uh, chops together pretty darn well in this game. And defensively, they've only given up two field goals. So there's been a little bend, but not much break. And remember, St. Francis did not score in that uh, first quarter. Here's a run by Reeder once again after the screen. It's actually a lateral. If he had fumbled that ball, that would have been a free ball because that was behind the line of scrimmage. And, but instead, he's able to turn up the field and get to inside the 40 to the 39. He'll bring up third down in five. You know, really, you got to be careful, and you and I both know this, with that expectations game. Uh, USF expected to be very, very good after their great performance last year. But the thing I saw in my analysis of Trinity is they certainly had every reason to believe there was every reason to believe Trinity was going to be a very much improved football team this year. And that is exactly what they've shown this afternoon. No question about it. They have been very much improved. Now, here's Burmeister drops the throw, time of the pocket, throws in the middle, and that one short hops to nobody. Somebody uh, not where they yes, needed to be, but it'll be fourth down and five now with the clock stopped at 9.07 remaining, and I would guess they're going to go for it on fourth down. Why not? Well, they're into Cougar territory, and if they are going to have any hope of making a big comeback in this football game, uh, they need to keep trying. They're the underdog in this game, so on fourth and long, fourth and about well, about six, watch for Burmeister maybe to try one of those quick passes again that he's had a lot of success with today. Got to get to the Cougar 34-yard line on this snap of the football. One wide to the right, actually two wide now. Wendell's in there. Movement at the line of scrimmage. No penalty flag, though. Burmeister throws off the run and waits for an easy grab by Raphael Williams, and he's down inside the 30. Nobody near him. <laughs> So they'll pick up a new set of downs to work with. And a little closer to the goal line, it'll be first and 10 at the USF 30-yard line. Burmeister on that play, Joe, uh, 6'1", 191 out of Homestead, Florida. And he shows an ability to extend the play. So, you know, he seems to be a heady player on the field, but he also can extend the play and he can move a little bit outside the pocket. That was a nice play by him and a nice chance to find his receiver for a first down. Now he flips the ball on a pass. That's Williams again. He's but wrestled round right at the 30-yard line. There comes yet another penalty flag into the pile. And we talked about it earlier, Phil, that the Cougars are really not getting to Burmeister. Not much pressure. He's able to have time and get his reads downfield and uh, attempt some passes. Now when they try to run, it's a different story. And St. Francis really shut the door, especially in the middle. Now we saw uh, a... Uh, one sack in the first half by USF. I don't think we've had any in the second half, although Burmeister, if you remember, on the last set of downs was woozy coming off the field. So he did get hit after delivering an incomplete pass up the field. But he's he's recovered from that, and he seems to have his full faculties on this particular drive. Big penalty, though, against the Trojans. That backs them up to the Cougar 39. It's first down and 20. Motion left to right behind the line of scrimmage. Burmeister barking out the signals. Long count. Now he's got the ball. The pocket throws to the right side, looking for Hargis, and he can't find the uh, handle on it. Boy, the official started to reach in his right pocket and then folded back. A little contact down there in the right corner of the end zone, but 
No harm, no foul, and it'll be second down and long. Nice job by Shannon Swain. Not in a position to try and locate the football, but knew from the body language of the offensive player that the ball was in the air, and he just kind of made sure he used the sideline to his advantage to make that catch very difficult. And that's exactly what happened. The ball fell into the corner of the end zone. Almost a touchdown, but no score. Two wide either side of the field. Wendell and Williams out there to the left. They'll throw over the middle, and that's a catch. But Branch is chopped down right at the line of scrimmage. And what a great defensive play. St. Francis was there once again. Yeah, and that was Jamal Jackson, inside linebacker, freshman, Joe. There's a name that we may be talking about some more because that was a tremendously athletic play by Jackson who got that tackle to fight off a couple of blockers and just used his upper body to bring the ball carrier down. So the ball actually back around the 40-yard line, third down and a bit longer. They've got to get down to the 20-yard line of St. Francis. Got a couple of downs to work with. Now 7.45 remaining in regulation. Motion again left to right behind the line of scrimmage for Meister. And steps up, throws right side, got a catch at the 20-yard line, and they will be well. Let's see if they got the first down. Very close to it. The catch is yeah. made. Yeah. 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 pass today, and they do move the chains first and ten as TIU tries to salvage something here in the late going. They've not yet scored today a touchdown. They have been held to a pair of field goals. Now they've. Uh, advance to the 20-yard line, Joe, into the red zone. They've been there before in this ball game, and the Cougar defense stiffened every time and forced field goal attempts. John's more the lone wide to the right. They've got Williams and Wendell to the left, stepping up Burmeister, being spun around, throws on the run, and throws that ball away. I'll tell you what, he's a junior, but he knew he was in trouble and uh, got rid of it. Well, he turned one way, and the Cougar defender was there but he showed the athletic ability to turn in the other direction and deliver the ball harmlessly out of bounds to the benefit of his team. Yeah, he's a good-looking quarterback. We have not seen Zach Chester today. He's a senior at 6'1", and he threw for just under 1,400 yards last year. Did have six touchdowns, but the knock on him, he suffered 14 interceptions. Burmeister knocked around a little bit today. Woozy at times, but he has uh, hung in there, been a gamer, now with seven, oh, just over seven minutes remaining in this ballgame. Burmeister again, short drop, throws right. He's got to catch Williams, nailed at the 15, as the Cougars were right there. You know, talking about Burmeister versus Chester, Chester was the starter for most of last year, uh, but you did talk about Chester's propensity to throw interceptions, and that really was the difference that I, I detected as well. Burmeister... His ratio, he only threw three interceptions last year compared to uh, double-digit touchdown passes. That's the big difference between him and the other quarterback. Third down in five. Branch is the running back offset to the left side. They'll hand the ball to him, looks, and he angles, and he's got a turn and into the end zone. He reached for the pylon. Let's see if he got there. Touchdown. So a 15 for the first time today, the Trojans are on the board with a touchdown at the 621 bar. 15-yard touchdown run by Isaac Branch, who ran for three touchdowns a year ago. That'll make it 34-12, awaiting the extra point attempt. That was an impressive drive, Joe. Uh, 11 plays, 60 or 44 yards, and uh, a combination of runs and passes, and TIU has a touchdown. Here's a kind of a knuckleball extra point, but it is good through the uprights. So that will be 34-13 our score. 621 remains, and we'll be back after this 30 second timeout. Cougar still on top, and this is Cougar Football on Redeemer Radio, 106.3 FM, Northeast Indiana. Hi, sports fans, Sean McBride here, inviting you to try the barbershop experience. St. Joe Center Barbershop, located at the corner of St. Joe Center and Maplecrest, prides itself on professionalism, cleanliness, and a family-friendly atmosphere. In their third generation of family ownership, they have a combined experience of over 125 years. Give them a call at 485-6981. It's my barbershop of choice. That's St. Joe Center Barbershop at 485-6981. 
Now 6.21 remaining, a TIU to kick it away. And the Cougars expecting something uh, onside. They have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten men up within about five yards of the line scrimmage. Only one uh, kick returner back as deep as the 15, 16 yard line. So Cougars expecting that TIU with 621 remaining, Phil, they've got to get the football back. Here's Carter waiting for the go ahead and approaches and he kicks it long. End over end and that will go into the end zone. And just a yard away from the end, end line, so it'll come out to the 25. That kind of surprised me a little bit. Well, I think TIU liked it, the ability to take advantage of their ability to kick the ball out of the end zone and force the Cougars to start at their own 20. They must have thought that was the best percentage play for them at this point. Count on some kind of a turnover or on their defense forcing a three and out, although the Cougar offense has performed pretty well on five of their last six drives scoring touchdowns. Cougars actually will start at their own 25, and their lead now is back to a three-touchdown lead. It's 34 to 13. And we're going to see Clay Scenarius in at quarterback now. Freshman, six foot four, taking his first collegiate snap. Looks to hand the ball off, and nothing there. Justin Green runs in to one of the linebackers, and you know that's going to be Portillo or Schlusser. But uh, no gain on that call. Well, and, and Harris on that play, he had looked almost unstoppable on the previous drive. But he yes, found yes, after his know. first uh, incursion into the line, and then when he found the place he went to, there were two defenders waiting for him. So Cenarius in the freshman, true freshman quarterback. Second down and 10, maybe a little bit of a loss that last carry. And here's the reverse coming up, and they've got Green again trapped and dropped back. At the 20 yard line, that'll be a loss of five. And uh, Justin Green is not used to that and kind of flips the ball to the official, and he will check out of the ball game. That'll take the clock down to 5 30, and the clock is running. Samirius, a freshman out of uh, Waterford, Michigan, 6'4, 184, good looking athlete, Our Lady of the Lakes High School. Loss of five, so brings up third down and 15. Cougars not to, able to move the ball forward so far in this series. Cenarius has not attempted to pass. He's looked twice to Justin Green, and he's not been able to accomplish much. Now on third down and long, drops the throw. Flush to his right, holds it down, and a penalty flag thrown again as Cenarius brings it across the 20 to the 22. Pretty good coverage downfield by Trinity International and a hold against St. Francis. <laughs> well, and you, and you would hope for scenarios' sake that he could have been in a better situation to hopefully get that first completion of his collegiate career out of the way. But unfortunately, it came on a third and long when he had to attempt to pass. And TIU is able to just tee off with the pressure, and scenario said, no chance to deliver the ball up the field. Well, we haven't seen much of Seth Code in this uh, fourth quarter, but he comes out now as the long snapper. And Josh Spitznail will be kicking into the wind. And Reader's back at his own 35-yard line. So Spitznail waiting at the Cougar 10 to punt the ball away. Got a good delivery. Kick us away. Not all that long, high, wobbly ball. And that's fielded on the run. No fair catch by Trophio Williams, by the way. And he goes two yards deep in the Cougar territory to the 14-yard line. Tackle was made by Spencer Calvert. So it's a three-touchdown lead, but still 4.26 to go here in the fourth quarter. And we'll see if the Cougars can find a way to stop this inspired TIU attack. TIU has done a better job in the second half of this football game, Joe, of protecting the football. Two turnovers in the first half, both led to touchdowns, a fumble and an interception. No turnovers in the second half. First and 10 at the Cougar 48-yard line. Burmeister's got Hargis in motion now, and he looks to throw again. Steps up in the pocket, dumps it off left side. There's Hargis. Works downfield, missed tackles, played in St. Francis. As it carries for a first down, they run after the catch. All the way down to the 38 yard line. Got a tackle. You got a tackle in an open field sometimes, Joe. That's a hard thing to do. 
especially when you got two big bodies looking at one shifty quick one. Now here's a quick throw to the left side, and boy, I tell you what, receiver, defender, all met at the same time the ball. That was Williams that uh, was the intended receiver, but a great job defensively by St. Francis, and that was a better job of coverage. Emmanuel Evans uh, was excellent coverage on that play, and he timed his uh, his strip of the football just right, and so we've got an incomplete pass, uh, stopping the clock uh, for TIU. Just over four minutes remaining. Hard to stays in wide to the right, two wide to the left side. Wendell up in the slot here to the right side as well. Burmeister short drop again, dumps it off in this, and the Cougars corral that quickly. It'll be about a five-yard gain to the 33-yard line. TIU's had a lot of their bread and butter success today with those little dump-off passes into, you know, into the flats, uh, just about five, six yards away from the line of scrimmage. Well, undoubtedly, that was the, the uh, game plan today, Joe, to deal with what they expected to be in the way of great pressure from this defensive front for St. Francis was to throw those quick passes. Gain of four second. There's the same result in Wendell. They'll turn for the first down. So they'll move the chains once again with 334 and should TIU score a touchdown, suddenly this gets to be a little bit more interesting ball game. Cougar lead is 21 points, but 14 is a little different. Well, and the thing was, was USF on their last possession was only able to burn uh, less than a minute off the clock, and that was with their uh, attempts to run the clock. Here's Burmeister again wanting to throw a time of the pocket and threw wide of the crossing. That was Godfrey, I believe, the intended uh, receiver on the crossing pattern, but incomplete. One of the rare times he's missed one of those short uh, crossing patterns, and that'll take the clock to 3.15 remaining. <laughs> Trinity with two timeouts. So you're right, Joe. They, you know, they they're making a little bit of a run here at the end of this football game, but they it's still a tall order. They need several scores. And they need them now, and they've only got 3:15 on the clock. Trojans shuttling uh, trips in and out. Play clock, meanwhile, is down to 12. They're up the line of scrimmage, though. Too wide again to the right, including Hargis. Burmeister barking up the signals, looks that way, throws, and that's incomplete. There's a penalty flag. I tell you what, Cougars were playing the ball that time. There was contact, Hargis with the intended receiver. But that's a tough penalty to take. It goes against Shannon Swain, and I don't know about that one. You know, sometimes athleticism is beyond uh, the comprehensive of an official down on the field. And that's all I'm going to say, because that was a great defensive play by USF. I'm with you. I thought that it was he was going for the ball, playing the ball. You know, the defenders got the right for the ball the same as the receiver does. And, well, <laughs> they play on. The thing is, sometimes it just looks like the play is so good that if there had to be something unfair about it, and I think that's why, why we saw a flag on that play. But that was, that was not a good call. Again, a quick pass to the right, and uh, that will be a game down inside the 20. To about the 18-yard yeah, line. John Moore again, I believe that's his second catch of the day. And, uh, boy, they got a great spot of that ball for the 15. He was nowhere near the 15. Under two, under three minutes' time remaining now. Vermeister content to go with the short passing routes. Looks again, now throws the fade to the corner, but that's too far. Overthrows his intended receiver. Well bracketed, two Cougar defenders. In on the play, watching that to stop the clock now with 2.43 to go. But the strategy to throw quick passes continues. Uh, that of the fate desire, you know, Burmeister just takes the snap, turns one direction, and just throws to a spot on the field, uh, hoping his receiver was there, but well defended by the Cougars. Wouldn't be surprised he tries to go back either to Williams now or to Wendell. They're split part of the trips package wide left. Now the Cougars come up a little bit tighter as Burmeister steps up, and he'll run. And he's got the first out at the 10 to the 5. Still in feet. Touchdown. Burmeister runs into the end zone. 17-yard touchdown run. So he crossed everybody up, faked the pass, and broke up the middle. 17-yard touchdown run at the 236 mark. And T.I.U. not done yet. Burmeister a year ago did not have a rushing touchdown. He's got one today. So now, an important extra point kick. A year ago, Carter was 18 of 21. And uh, booms the ball. 
through the uprights. So the 21 point lead is down. It took 14. 34 20. Still 230 seconds to go. We'll be back after this timeout. Cougar football on the road on Redeemer Radio, 106.3 FM, Northeast Indiana. Programming on Redeemer Radio is underwritten in part by Bob Busher Homes. Floor plan customization is what they specialize in. Find floor plans, building sites, and read Bob's story on the web at bobbusherhomes.com. Bob Busher Homes is locally owned with offices in Fort Wayne and Angola. For more information about new home building or remodeling, Bob Busher Homes can be reached at 260-490-3355. Well, the situation tightens now as TIU not going away quietly. They have come within 14 points of the fourth-ranked Cougars, Bill, and now again will we see an onside attempt. And Joe, once again, the trend of the points being scored in this football game when the win was at the offensive team's back continues because two touchdowns now scored by TIU in this quarter, both with the wind at their back. And they've got to onside kick the ball now because if they could recover that, they could put themselves in a position to tie or take the lead uh, with two possessions. Again, yeah, St. Francis with 10 men up within about five, six yards of the line of scrimmage. And here comes the onside attempt, right to left. Takes a bounce. That's fielded on the fly by who else? Self coach just grabbed it in the air. And the Cougars will have it at the 44 yard line of Premier International. That's having a good hands guy there. That's a tough play, too, because that ball bounced. It was really uh, almost accelerating, and Seth just reached out and snagged the ball in the air uh, at about eye, eye level and fell on it. So USF will have great field position. That's good news. And uh, USF, you know, if they can get a first down here, they can salt this one away. Stenarius does come out to quarterback the Cougars now, and he's got a little better field position than he saw last series. First and 10 at the 44. Goal line set is in. They'll give the ball Justin Green, looking for running room angles to the right and dives down inside the 40-yard line, maybe down to the 39. So that'll take the clock to 2.30 time remaining. And the Trojans will call a timeout. They, that is the first of three that they have, and we'll keep things right here as Green scampers for four yards. Well, the scoreboard has them as only having one timeout left, so I think they must have called one earlier. I don't if you remember that. So that, that could be key here. Uh, but the good news is that on first down, Cougars got a little bit of a nice game, and so uh, they still got, you know, they've got four yards on first down. If they can get a first down here, they can probably run the clock out. You know, uh, in the recruiting, the Cougars picked up. I was kidding. Uh, the coaching staff said, well, you've gone to Michigan for your young, uh, tall, talented uh, quarterbacks. I don't know if you picked up on any sidelines on or we're seeing Cenarius, uh freshman right now. Uh, you know, saw him in the scrimmage last week, thought he looked impressive, but I didn't think he had uh, really differentiated himself from the other freshman quarterbacks. It's kind of an interesting situation. You've got... Herrera, the junior, and then you've got four uh, freshmen who are all uh, contenders for that backup position. Second down and six, two safeties back for the Trojans. Here's a little counter run by Justin Green again, sports three on the left side. Picked up a couple of yards. will reach the 37 yard line. They'll take the clue. Okay, now the, our Jerry Frumpy, our referee, does correct himself and say that is their last timeout. So with our score 34 to 20, we were scored to 26 on the clock. It'll be third down and four, and TIU is out of timeouts. US, uh, USF played very well in the second and third quarter here today, Joe, uh, and scored right at the start of the fourth quarter. And that made the score 34 to six, and it looked like the romp was on. But since that time, CIU on two straight possessions has moved the ball really effectively with the wind at their back, and has made this an interesting end to the game. USF though, with possessing the ball now in, in CIU territory at the 36, with a first down here, can almost put the game to an end. Third down and four, and what's interesting, the wind has kicked up again. It was silent for a couple of minutes. Here's Green, and you won't get any running room whatsoever. 
knocked down back around the 40-yard line. They may give us more progress up around 30, so it'll be fourth down, fourth down and five. And we'll see what this – and the clock does keep running. Remember, TIU is out of timeouts, so we will – Run the clock inside of two minutes before this snap of the football if the Cougars do run a play. We'll see. I think what USF does here is they're going to let the 25-second uh, clock run it down so they'll take as much time off the clock as possible. They'll take the five-yard penalty, and then they'll punt the football. Still uh, five seconds to go. They'll take it down to about a minute 36. And they do uh, take a timeout. So, timeout number two against St. Francis. They have one remaining. And we'll keep things right here because Robbins would expect that Spitdale will come on to try to uh, get a coffin corner kick to bury the uh, Trojans back deep in their own territory with just now 95 seconds remaining for the ball game. No, Phil, it seemed like it wasn't that long ago when the Cougars led it 34 to a six, and uh, you thought you felt pretty comfortable. But TIU has not gone away. They put two touchdowns on the board. Well, and it's Furmeister, the quarterback, who has been so impressive here today, uh, dealing with the pressure, completing the short passes. And then for the last touchdown, for the first time today, we saw him scramble uh, out of the pocket and carry the ball himself. And he did so very effectively. USF had shut down every run possibility, but he ran it in for a touchdown. Spitnail does come back in to punt the ball, waits at the USF 49, and gets a good snap back to him. Kick is away. It was off the side of his foot. Not a good kick. He, it does go inside the 30, and let's see where they line it up somewhere around the 26-yard line. I know he was hoping for a little bit more than that, but that is where the Trojans, with 129 on the clock, go back on offense. He hung the point of the ball and dropped it in that effort to kind of pooch kick it. Uh, but then missed the ball uh, where he wanted to kick it and uh, not effective at all. A net of only about 15 yards on that kick. I know that USF would have liked to have seen that inside the 10 yard line. That's what they were after. Burmeister with another chance, minute 29, and you wonder if they can stay with that possession type of five and six yard passing game. Burmeister flushed to his right, buying time, dumps it off too high. On a crossing pattern that time, trying to hit Isaac Branch coming into the backfield. That will take the clock down to a minute 24 remaining, second down and 10. Cougars did a good job of taking away anything down deep. Well, and that's, you got to prevent uh, the long one here as long as you can contain the ball in the uh, under 20 yard range here. It's going to take at least five plays for TIU to score, and that's going to take a lot of time off the clock. By the way, interesting, all new numbers in that secondary for St. Francis. They want the youngster. Here's the sack. Now they've got Burmeister wrapped up and dropped for a big loss. And we'll have to check the numbers on their uh, 91, I think, for St. Francis getting it. Credit Carlin Coleman, a freshman out of Indianapolis for that. Uh, that big uh, uh, coming a big time, and it keeps the clock running, which is now going to tick down under a minute. Nose of the football back inside the 20 now. Burmeister, under a minute, throws it as far as he can. Nobody home. That one aired out hit, uh, at about the Cougar 45-yard line. But that uh, will bring up now fourth down, and they've got to get out to their own 32-yard line on this snap. Burmeyer is uh, favoring uh, his right hand or wrist, and that looks like he's in a little bit of pain, but... Uh, you know, it's a gamer. I respond all you can say. It's a cliche. He's played a great game today, and he's going to stay in for this fourth down play. 52 seconds remaining, so this may be it. If they can't uh, convert fourth down and 15, Burmeister again, short drop. Look, steps up, dumps it off. He's got a catch, but that'll do it. This it was only a gain out to about the 23-yard line. Branch again on the catch. So Cougars will take over the football now, and all they've got to do is take a couple of snaps, take a knee, and this one will be in the books for a Cougar victory in this 2016 opener on the road. A lot of things to work on for the Cougars. There's no question about that. But uh, if you're TIU, you take away a 
lot of positives out of this game. They just, you know, played a strong, strong game against what the team that was ranked number four in the country coming into the season, uh, and uh, you know, made it a ball game right down to the end. Let's see if Scenarius. Now they've uh, brought in uh, the third quarterback on the day. I've got to check the number on this. As here will be a, a run to the right side, and they'll just uh, take a knee. And that is Jacob Coker. Coker Back comes in. Another one of those Michigan guys to uh, 6'2", 183-pound freshman out of Tecumseh, Michigan, Tecumseh High School. And he just took the snap, ran a couple of steps, and then took a planned slide to the ground. And the Cougars are just going to run as much time off this clock as they can. And on this next snap, they'll take the knee. And they'll take the victory very happily uh, back to Fort Wayne, Indiana. May not even have to take a snap. Play clock still at ten, and that shows exactly the same t- same time remaining in this ball game. So Coker brings them up to the line of scrimmage, but just three seconds, two seconds, and they do run a play. Justin Green, and up the middle, Justin Green. They tackle him from behind as he got to the twenty-two, and that will do it. So it goes to the books. A Cougar victory here on the road, thirty-four to twenty. Lots of great things to talk about, some not-so-great things to talk about. But the end, uh, you know, all they, all, they, all they remember, Bill Howe, is whether you win or loss, and the Cougars come up with the victory today on the road, 34-20. You want to know after week one is what it's all about. And uh, this game actually went closer the way I thought it might uh, than a lot of people thought it would uh, as a result of what I thought was going to be an improved Trinity team, and they certainly looked all that today.